This is the man whose embrace of nationalism is blamed for all the wars in Yugoslavia today, Slobodan Milosevic. Ja sam pokušao da se pitam, čekaj, ako tako idemo, šta će od otačbine ostati? On je isforsirao i nametnuo taj pristup. Mi ćemo ga nametnuti i Jugoslaviji. A što je apsurdno, u razvoju svih tih događaja kasnije, mi smo bili optuženi za nacionalizam. Mi ovdje. Da u svaku bitku ulazimo sa namerom da je dobijemo. In 1980, Marshal Tito made his final journey through communist Yugoslavia, the country he had created. For 35 years, he'd held Yugoslavia's six republics together with an iron hand. Any hint of nationalism from Serbs, Croats, Muslims, Macedonians or Slovenes was crushed. He called this policy brotherhood and unity. Seven years later, Yugoslavia was still united. Tito's heirs kept ethnic hatreds buried. In the Republic of Serbia, Milosevic was the right-hand man of the president, Ivan Stambolic. Yugoslavia's tragedy began when Milosevic moved against him. Uspeo sam sve zamke da zaobiđem, da izbegnem. Miloševića mi niko nije podmetno. Ja sam ga izabrao. The story began in Kosovo, Serbia's poorest province, bordering Albania. Iako su oni tada tražili da opet ja idem na Kosovo i drugovi su predlagali, ja sam se založio da ide Milošević na taj miting. The president sent his most trusted comrade to calm an ethnic conflict that was brewing up. The local communists, mainly ethnic Albanians, faced a challenge from a group of nationalist Serbs. Milošević isključivo razgovore vodi sa privrednim, visokim privrednim funkcionerima i sa komunističkim aktivima. Znači, on van komunističke maršute ništa ne predviđa. Mi u Kosovu polju kao nacionalisti, oni ne sme da dođe. Svaka druga osnova koja bi bila zasnovana na nacionalnoj netrpeljivosti, na širenju nacionalne mržnje, ne može biti progresivna osnova. Druže predsjednik, drugovi. Ja čekam 12 godine, poznaje me Azijem vlasi, poznaje me ovaj drugovi. I u crka me poznaje. 12 godine čekamo sužaj. Da je naša ocena u Centralnom komitetu Saveza komunista Srbije da mi nismo zadovoljni brzino. Milošević je održao jedan govor u svojstvu funkcije koju je tada obavljao. On je bio predsjednik Saveza komunista Srbije. Prišao sam do Bine i rekao sam mu, druže predsjedniče, jer i ja sam tad bio komunista, član partije. Rekao sam mu, druže predsjedniče, vi ste ovde imali monolog. Mi vas zato nismo zvali. Mi želimo s vama da imamo dijalog. I on je rekao, u redu je. Kaže, može li to da bude petak? I iz mase je jedan odgovor, može, u petak u pet sati, može. Živjelo pratku jedinstvo naroda Jugoslavije! Živjelo! By agreeing to meet the nationalists, Milosevic was violating the guiding principle of Tito's Yugoslavia and in Serbia's most sensitive area. Kosovo is not an ordinary part of Serbia. Kosovo is only the heart of Serbia. Our entire history is on Kosovo. All our monasteries are on Kosovo. In 1389, on the field of blackbirds, King Lazar had led the Serb army into battle to try to halt the advance of Islam. <laughs> 
Six centuries later, Serb television recreated their heroic defeat. By then, most Serbs had left this desolate province, but extras to play the invading infidel were plentiful. For the majority of Kosovans were Muslim Albanians. The few remaining Serbs claimed they were being driven from their ancient kingdom. Stories of Albanian atrocities, no matter how wild, were readily believed in Serbia. U tim okolnostima je svaka pojava bilo koje srpske ličnosti koji bi otvoreno dao za pravo srpskom narodu na Kosovu da mora biti zaštićen, da mora biti ravnopravan, da ne mogu da se siluju devojčice, da ne mogu da se pale kuće, da ne mogu da se ruše groblja. Morao je eksplozivno da dobije. Milosevic now had the chance to exploit the Kosovo issue. He invited his most trusted advisers home. To je Milošević više manje tu čuto, a mi smo svi galamili ostali. Jer on u stvari koji ima najbolji pregled stvari i najveću odgovornost, on je bio, ne mogu da kažem, vrlo zabrinut, ali je stvarno razmišljio o celoj situaciji. Konsultovali smo se tako, da kažem, oko toga kako on treba da govori, da li treba da govori i kako treba da govori i tako dalje. Ja sam smatrala da treba da govori konstruktivno, da pruži podršku Srbima koja im i pripada. Ta je situacija tamo bila neizdržljiva. Ljudi su bili potpuno obespravljeni. Mi nikad nismo imali u vidu da bilo ko u ovoj zemlji sme da bude diskriminisan. Down in Kosovo, the local communist party boss soon heard Milosevic was up to something. Milošević je kište pa zdrgujeni sekretar egzekutiva i ka pa sekretar te egzekutiv si njerz per punt ndita. Da je fakti kište disa srve kryesor, ju ka spjegu ška duot fljasin. Jer mi nemamo vremena. Petak, ponedljak večer, znači mi imamo utorak, sredu, četvrtak se spremimo, samo tri dana. Mi idemo svak na svoju stranu, da se sretnemo s ljudima, da se vidimo, da se organizujemo, nego smo rekli svi ovi momci koji umeju dobro da se biju, da ponesu sve što treba. Mi smo za proširenje trotoara istovarili dve prikolice traktorske ovakvih kamenova. To smo da se proširi trotoar, to nije bilo za policiju. I to je bilo tu ako bi, ne daj Bože, zatrebalo. Aneta Propoško je imala povijet tojim češtu. E kimi škuva pej Priština, spej zjura s nemen, fuš Kosova, išen mljela stadion do, kišen narod, kse žormađija. The Kosovo party boss trailed along beside Milosevic, uncertain of what he was walking into. Da dođu ovde, drug predsednik Milošević je dozvolio da uđu i oni. Ostali, ostali, čekaj, čekaj! When the meeting began, Serb after Serb claimed the Albanians in Kosovo were making life impossible for them. Ja sam tada prvi put čuo tu frazu etnički čisto. Tada je bilo Kosovo. Njihov je cilj bio etnički čisto Kosovo. Ljudi su ubijani, čak su i groblja raskopavana, paljeni manastiri, voćnjaci, polja. Počeo je egzodus Srba sa Kosova. Ko masko par disa sen, da se je diša situatu, ne tajša če par rejna. Atmosfera ište tendosun, jo tolerante, kužda če flitke, če ište sama ekstrem ofendante šiptart, fynte šiptart, fitante aplauz ma šumi. E tu rejn ćemo da se ustavimo. Ili će ta reka da krene nazad, da se ljudi vrate na svoja ognjišta, ili ćemo i mi kolektivno da idemo. Mi hoćemo da živimo ovde, to nam je osnovna želja, ali na ovakav način ne, ne i ne. 
I sad, mi smo kobajagi počeli sastanak, ušli su ti, ali na polju se samo čuje nešto. Mi ne znamo šta se događa. A scuffle had started outside between the Serbs and the Kosovan police. Everything was going according to plan. Ovi su naši bežali, što je ohrabrilo policiju, pa ona krenula u dobar juriš. Dok su ove naše doterali do kamenja. Kad su ih doterali dotle, onda ovi naši okrenu tako da nijedan nije prošao bez poklona od narodne mase. Svi su dobili po dva, tri, po pet, po šlemu, po leđima, po glavi. I onda priđemo tamo opet do Miloševića i kažemo napolje se, napolje milicija tuče naš narod. I onda više nije mogo da prebaci loptu nikome. Ni da ide ovaj, ni da ide onaj. Onda on izlazi, verovatno je imao veliku tremu, uplašio se, preživljavao je strah jer i on zna, i on je isto kao i mi tako i on znao šta je sve u igri i šta je sve na kocke. Šiko je palko zašto već je kočiti vtujeren na šičimi nevet. Karakteristik. Drugovi! For Milosevic, this was the moment of decision. What Milosevic said next would change everything. That night, Serb television created the Milosevic legend. Serbia saw him embrace the cause of the Serbs in Kosovo. Mi smo taj izveštaj pravili za svoje redovne emisije, mi imamo tri kanala i on je bio vrlo zadovoljan tim putem zato što misli da je uradio ono što je trebao da uradi. Vi kao presnik, kako možete da dozvolite da se diže palica na ovaj narod? Drugarice i drugovi, mi moramo da radimo, da saslušamo sve vaše delegate. Viewers in Serbia were not shown how the Serbs had provoked the police. The Milosevic myth was born with a lie at its core. Pa on je se vratio s Kosova veoma splahiren, vrele glave, u jednom užem sastavu u kome smo o tome razgovarali da se ovako patetično uzvikuje, otačbina je u pitanju. Milosevic stood accused of breaching party policy. Ivan Stambolić je tu postavio pitanje zašto je Slobodan tako govorio dole. Milosevic je rekao da treba da se nešto promeni. Jer vlast drže dole šiptari. Srbi ne mogu, nemaju nigde u vlastima, sve su ih učistili. A osnova bile su ingerencije koje je pokrajina imala, imajući praktično status republike i sve poluge vlasti u rukama, da sprovede jedan takav, rekao bih, čist nacistički cilj. Ja sam pokušao da se pitam na tom sastanku, čekaj, ako tako idemo, šta će od otačbine ostati? Ja sam tada shvatio da više nisu razlike samo u metodu. da se u stvari konstituišu dve politike prema Kosovu i dve politike prema rešavanju problema Republike i Pokrajina. I mi ćemo se posle toga sve više udaljavati. The Serb president tried to avoid an open conflict with his deputy, so the number three in the party issued a public rebuke. Dragiša Pavlović je zatim rekao da se u poslednje vreme u javnim istupima pojavljuju pojedine ideje i pojedine ličnosti otvorenog antikomunističkog karaktera i to iza zakona navodnog doprinosa s provođenju zaključaka o Kosovu. Ja sam otišao kod kuće, kod Miloševića da se informišem i njega zatiče u situaciji kranje raskomoćenosti, on se već skinuo kravatu, obukao jaknu, ide na vikend 
i zavalio se u fotelju, digo noge na Stočić i gleda u stvari Beogradski program. Šta treba da se dogodi da bismo shvatili da obarač na oružju povlače i neodmerene reči na javnoj sceni. Prema tome, taj njegov javni nastup nije bao samo nizak udarac interesima Srba na Kosovu, nego i nizak udarac reformi koja je trebala da se izvede. Kad je on završio taj tekst sa konferenciji za štampu, Milošović je ustao, videla se prosto jedna ovakva odlučnost u njemu i rekao je ovo u ponedeljak moramo raspraviti. Milošević konsultirao svoj taktikal advisor. He suggested attack was the best defense. Ja sam bio kategoričan. Lično sam mu predložio da Dragišu Pavlovića treba isključiti iz predsjedništva. To me je jedna od prepreka bila i jedno veoma ovako dugo prisutno birokratsko rukovodstvo u Srbiji. Bilo mu je, bila mu je ideja privlačna, ali očigledno je da se zamislio da, da li ćemo uspeti, da li možemo da krenemo, jer je to ipak jedna prelomna stvar za samog predsjednika. The showdown came a few days later at a meeting of Serbia's top communists. Tu kompromisa ne može biti, jer svaki izgubljeni dan znači produžavanja krize na Kosu. Svako oklevanje znači nove pritiske To oust the president's man, Milosevic canvassed every possible vote. Pom sat azem tljutem ndikote antarte komitete cendror nga Kosova če dvotojn per propozim nimoma ksohere, ksohere ose kur. O i thash kur se si? Mi smo otpore očekivali naročito na Kosovo od separatista. Mi smo ih očekivali Ovdje, razvodnjavanje ili otezanje na sprovođenju zaključaka jeste kršenje partijske discipline, bez obzira što se nekome i nekima te reči ne sviđaju. Ja mislim da Ivan nije odoleo iskušenju liderskog prilaza i liderskog ponašanja. Razume se, to kad je se rešilo ići u politički obračun. Onda su se tražili povodi koji su odgovarali onome koje je sukob hteo i sukob vodio i forsirao. Zaista ne razumem zašto mi stavlja tu inkriminisanu reč liderstvo u krivicu. Ja taj problem nisam ni prema dušku imao niti prema sebi sam imao. Kad su svi završili pozvao je CK da glasa, formulisao pitanje o kome treba da se glasa i pre nego što su uopšte ovi snašli, CK je glasao. Ko je za predlog neka digne ruku? It was clearly an overwhelming victory for Milosevic. Hvala. He savored the moment. Ko je protiv predloga neka digne ruku? Jedan, dva, tri, četiri, pet, šest, sedam, osam. Osam protiv. Ono što sam, što se sećam, to je da recimo Ivan Stambulić koji je sedao otprilike u prvom, drugom redu, kad je glasano ko je za, ko je protiv odluke, on se okrenuo da vidi u sali i onda se zapanio da je samo osam ljudi. To je bio stvarno debakao. Milosevic now launched Serbia on a crusade to take control of Yugoslavia. Njega je povukla ta atmosfera i dolio je ulje na vatru. Nije problem što ga je on dolio kad se radi o Srbima na Kosovu, no što je se, to je bio zov za sve Srbe. The bones of King Lazar, who died at the Battle of Kosovo, were paraded round Yugoslavia, inspiring the Serbs to reclaim their former glory. Serbia 
Serbia had dominated Yugoslavia. To cut it down to size, Tito had given its two provinces, Kosovo and Vojvodina, self-government. In federal bodies, they could use their vote to gang up with the northern republics of Croatia and Slovenia against Serbia. Milosevic set out to seize these votes. He started here, as his supporters' club of Serb nationalists were brought in from Kosovo. The nationalists, fueled by a day out with free food and drink, quickly turned local discontent into a popular revolution against the grey bureaucrats of the old regime. It took only a word from Milosevic to finish the job. Vojvodina fell to Milosevic. The next target was the Republic of Montenegro, always closely allied with Serbia. The old president could do nothing. One more Milosevic man was installed. Možda će se i praviti da nisu čuli naše zvižduke kao što se prave da ne znaju šta je uzrok našem nezadovoljstvu. Ovaj miting je organizovao i izveo narod. Narod na njemu odlučuje i treba da odluči. By the beginning of 1989, Milosevic controlled half of Yugoslavia. But here in Kosovo, the Albanians were in a majority and they hit back. The miners led a general strike, demanding that their man be returned to power. To help Milosevic make good his threat, the Kosovo Serbs arrived in Belgrade. As they mobilized outside the federal parliament, he asked the Yugoslav State Council to grant him emergency powers in Kosovo. Milosevic jako insistirao da predsjedništvo partije zaključi da će svi oni koji su krivi za događaje na Kosovo odgovarati. On je da je Srbi imamo pravicu graviti svoj interes. Ni pomemno, ali bomo ta interes, ta cilj dosegli po ustavni ali neustavni poti. The Slovene leader saw what this could do to the rest of Yugoslavia. Po vzoru tega, kar se je zgodilo na Kosovo, je bil seveda zelo pragmatičen razlog obnačelnih, da smo se temu vprli. Milan Kučan walked out of the meeting and went straight home to Slovenia. That evening, he spoke to his people. Počutimo, da se v starem trgu ne brani le pravica tamkašnjih rodarjev. Ne le pravica albanske narodnosti in avtonomnosti Kosova, ampak se brani avnojska Jugoslavija in enakoprav položaj vsake, tudi Slovenske republike in naroda v njej. To je naše ljude najviše iritiralo in doživeli so na neki način to kao, da kažem sada, uslovno slovenačku izdaju. The TV chief watched the feed from Slovenia and knew what to do. V tom stavu je bilo moje razmišljanje, da mi ne treba da to sakrijemo od naroda šta se tamo govori u drugoj republici. He made sure Serbia got the message. 
Milan Kučan je bio još provokativniji. U stvari, odbranom separatizma na Kosovu, branjen je separatizam u Sloveniji. The broadcast brought the people of Belgrade onto the streets. Ja sam u toku noći obavješten od organa državne bezbjednosti da je počeo protestni miting u studentskom gradu, da taj miting narasta, da taj miting seli iz studentskog grada. The next day, at first light, before the final decision was taken on Kosovo, local Serb workers were given the day off and marched into town. Milosevic's colleagues phoned him when the throng reached the parliament. Then they started to ask that they would speak again. Sloba, 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 Sloba. And Slobodan Milosevic was, at that time, as now, being a saint. And he said, keep it, I'm not going to stop here, it's important. It's important to stop here, 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 and we're talking about it here. With half of Belgrade baying for law and order in Kosovo, Milosevic sent his colleague to deliver an ultimatum to the Yugoslav president. He must give the Serbs the powers they asked for or deal with the crowd himself. Oni su mislili sad će ta masa da dođe da ih baci u Dunav. Čak i onda kad je Jović rekao mi ne možemo ako podnesu ostavke Morina i Šukrija, mi ne možemo smiriti miting, mi ne možemo držati pod kontrolom. Faced with what he regarded as Serb blackmail, the Yugoslav president set out to explain to the crowd the dangers of the road they were taking. Sad ja počnem da govorimo o Jugoslavi, o tome da treba da čuvamo slogu, da čuvamo jedinstvo i tako dalje. Što je na kostima sinova i čeri ove zemlje izgrađeno? Nećemo mi ići putem zavađanja naroda. Mi ćemo ići putem obnove bratstva i jedinstva. The Yugoslav president failed to satisfy the crowd. Dovoljno je da neko u taj milion ljudi ubaci neku petardu, počeće rušenje, paljenje. Ja sam tada rekao predsjedništvu sljedeći. Milion ljudi traži, niko od nas nema pravo da to ignoriše. Bez obzira na to što smo ljuti... The party council caved in. They gave Milosevic the power to use the Yugoslav army in Kosovo. Jović je euforično počeo time, zapalila se Srbija. Doći će drug Slobodan Milošević kao što smo obećali. The crowd had waited all day for Milošević to tell them that Kosovo would be theirs again. Nema te cene i nema te sile koja može pokolebati rukovodstvo Srbije i građane Srbije u borbi za pravedne ciljeve. Nu me koncijen Beograd, a man rub tu šku pr Bijeljin. Da ti denojim, da ti borgos, ma se i pej masas di koškat, no nu hapsi te vlasija, a i kiše pandizion. Now, with emergency powers in place, the parliament in Kosovo had no choice but to cede all its authority to Serbia. Kisha vlerësimin që janë të i pregadit krejt, po se disha janë të 
pregatit edhe mua dishka, përse disha a do të mburgosin, a do të mlikvidojn dikun fizikisht. The former party boss was charged with counter-revolutionary activity and imprisoned. All dissent was crushed. Ne sme da se zaboravi da su sve promene koje su do kraja izvršene u ustavnoj strukturi Srbije izvršene na jedan potpuno zakonit i ustavan način, uz potpuno poštovanje ukupne procedure. It was the tiny Republic of Slovenia that turned on the Serb giant. Slovenia had been enjoying a new freedom of speech that challenged the old communist system. The editors of the youth magazine Mladina regularly thumbed their nose at Belgrade. Ampak smo rekli, spisek za del, ki jih ta sistem ne prenaša, da rečeš nekaj grdega v partiji, da polemiziraš sistemu šolstva. To je nagradacija teh naših simptomov. Nismo, torej, slovenska je tožitstvo teh napisov, teh člankov, teh razmišljanj, ni ocenjevala kot kazniva dejanja. Others were not so laid back. The Yugoslav Minister of Defense took advantage of maneuvers in Slovenia to confront Kuchan, in plain view of the military might at his disposal. Tražim od vas da vi to zaustavite, jer vas ste dvojica jedino sposobni da to zaustavite. I nemojte mi kazati da to ne možete. Očitno je bilo, da je sprega armija Milošević del ljudi iz veznega vodstva partijskega in državnega povezan. But Kučan took no action. The journalists on Mladina soon discovered just how much trouble he was in. Bilo je eno popovdne, dan pred praznikom se mi zdi osvobodilne fronte, 26. aprila. Janez Janša se je pripelil v svojem avtu, navides slučajno mimo moje hiše, kjer sem jaz stanoval in mi je dal nek dokument, nek zapisnik očitno. In tisto sem jaz hitro prebral. It was the transcript of a Yugoslav Communist Party meeting. Milosevic and the army threw the book at Kučan. Mladina is backed by the CIA. Slovenia is harboring counter-revolutionaries who threaten the very survival of Yugoslavia. Ti ukrepi pa so najenostavneje razumljeni kot uvedba izrednih razmer. Vsi bili zelo napeti in smo pričakvali kakšno stopnjevanje reakcij strani vojske. Prišli smo na idejo, da naredimo iz tega zgodbo, saj to vendar ni mogoče. The article they published contained extracts from the secret party transcript. This was a clear breach of Yugoslav law. Slovenačko rukovodstvo se je uplašilo. Ono je shvatilo da mi idemo direktno na udar u Sloveniji. The Slovene leader bowed to the pressure from Belgrade. In a dawn raid, his secret police arrested Mladina's defense correspondent. Kjer so potem tam izvedli, preiskavo, oziroma kjer so zaigrali, preiskavo, kjer so takoj šli v tiste predale, kjer so bile določene stvari in tam pobrskali po nekterih pisalih mi, da sploh niso iskali. Skratka, točno se je videlo, da vejo, kaj išče. Among the papers was a secret military document, which gave Kučan a convenient way to make peace with Belgrade. He turned the whole case over to the Yugoslav army. The eye of the storm moved to a prison cell. The deputy head of Yugoslav military intelligence was sent to conduct the interrogations. Čemu još ne kojemo kafu i čaj? Čaj ne kojemo još kojemo. A punđi sem ga bio kafom, on nije hteo, o čajem nije hteo. 
pošalio sam se da ću prvo ja popiti ovaj tu kafu ako sumnja da su možda neki sedativi tu stavljeni. Kako se ti utisak steko? Ali pošten. Dobio sam utisak da se da je neko ovako teo da ih potekne. Ili da, ili da je na mještak. Bobo ten so spet grozili, da nam nikoli če videl družine, da bom dobil najmanj 15 let, pa še tisto potem podaljše, še lahko še za 15. Dakle, rekel sem mu, da je to 41. godina, onda ne bi bilo vremena za izpitivanje, niti natezanje sa njime. Kod njega je dokumentat, on neće da razgovara, streljački vod, ust, plot, strelja i brigada ode dalje. Da bi bila veća disciplina, Uvesti preki vojni sud, jer je u tim uslovima to davalo mnogo dobre rezultate, za ukradenu šljivu, ubranu krušku, uz azir, jednog streljaš i više niko to ne dira i ne bira. Znači, si noter, ne? To verjameš, ker... Ker je tu do kojca tako, da vidiš, da se to sposobno. Tako razmišljam. Tako je uspostavljen jedan kontakt, da sam mogo sa njime da razgovara. Prihvatio je i kafu i čaj. The army obtained enough evidence to put the journalists on trial and send them to prison. They wanted to show the dissident Slovenes they must obey the rules of United Yugoslavia. But the plan backfired. Međutim, ceo miting je praktično pretvoren u jednu anti-armijsku i anti-jugoslovensku sadržinu i kampanju. Takrat je bilo, da je Kučan prisiljen sprijeti našo igro, prisiljen igrati za kulisami, pravzaprav neke vrste sodelovanje. Kučan pruned his komunizm to suit the dissidents. This threatened to shake the Yugoslav party to its roots. He would always use the political climate in Slovenia as an explanation. He would tell me, Vasil, we can work this out, but we have to move in Slovenia. We are pressured, tremendously pressured by the political scene in Slovenia, and we have to be very careful. We have to stay in power. Kuchan now announced that he would change the Slovene constitution to keep Belgrade out of his affairs. Kao da se specifični interesi toga naroda i te republike više afirmišu ako se svi podelimo, nego ako zajedničkim snagama na jednom većem tržištu možemo da bolje postavimo našu ukupnu ekonomiju. Rekao sam i kategorički da smo mi odgovorni kao vrhovna oružena snaga, da upotrebimo sva sredstva koja stoje na raspolaganju, da to ne dozvolimo. Ja sam prašao kaj to pomeni u sada sredstva. Kazao uzmi pravnike, pa neka ti pravnici objasne kakva mi to prava imamo. Ne mogu ja da ti sada prevodim ustav. Miloševićeva predstava dovolj da pride nekaj tisoč mitingašev v Ljubljano. Ima to miting, pove slovencem, kako izdajalsko vodstvo imajo. The Serbs from Kosovo again mobilized. Miting istine i solidarnosti održat će se 1. decembra 1989. godine na glavnom trgu u Ljubljani sa početkom u 12 časova. In bo, tako kot se to zgodilo v Vojvodini, vodstvo eliminirano. Moje poznavanje ljudi, mentalitete teh ljudi, ki so sedeli takrat v srpskem vodstvu, je govorilo, da bomo imeli upravka z nasprotnikom, ki se ne bo zaustavil pred novenim sredstvom. But Kosovo was at the opposite end of the country from Slovenia, and Slovenia found an ally, its neighbor, the Republic of Croatia, which refused to let the agitators cross its territory. Kuchan's police had no trouble dealing with the few local Serbs who turned out to demonstrate. Viva Yugoslavia! Dole izdajnici svih boja u svim republikama! I zastavu za... Zastavu mi! Milosevic would have to try something else to defeat the Slovenes. The instrument Milosevic chose was the Yugoslav Communist Party. He called an extraordinary congress. As the delegates stood for their hymn to brotherhood and unity, 
They all knew that this Congress had been summoned to crush the defiant Slovenes. Slovenci su, odnosno bolje reći slovenačko partijsko rukovodstvo imalo je želju da nametne neku svoju viđu, neko svoje rešenje budući Jugoslavije. Kućan had only one hope. Yugoslavia's second largest republic, Croatia. I slovenske drugovi su me držali s tim u vezi u toku, pa čak i onda kada su žestoko raspravljali među sobom. Milosevic selected as chairman one of the leaders who owed him his career. It was the first party congress the president of Montenegro had ever attended. Prvo da vam kažem da su moji roditelji bili strašno ponosni kako je njihov sin pametan i baš onako mlad došao da sjedne na tako visoko mjesto i poziciju. Na mene kao predsjedavajućeg je vršen veliki pritisak da dajem što prije riječ delegatima iz Slovenije koji su trebali da iznesu amandmane na glasanje i znam da smo onda glasali i mahali sa onim kartonima crvenim i zelenim. I glasano je, imali smo crvene i zelene kartone. Desilo se stvarno da brojni njihovi amandmani su odbijani. A onda su oni, kad se jedan amandman odbije, ustajali i kazali, ako ovako nastavite, onda ćete vi rasturiti kongres. Da su bili prepričani, slovenci nimaju dovolj poguma da bi stvorili ta odlučilni korak, da bi to rej končali to mučno zgodbo. This latest example of the Serbs' domineering behavior shook the delegates from other republics. Video sam sa koliko strasti je upravo to bilo izbacivano iz predloga dokumenta sa žestokim aplauzima. A svi amandmani da budu ta osnova za diskusiju sa daleko više tolerancije međusobne i promišljanja što nam je činiti za revitalizaciju Saveza komunista Jugoslavije. Ako bismo sada krenuli u iznošenje i elaboraciju argumenta, kongres bi trajao dva mjeseca. Dozvolite, ja se izvinjavam svima vama. The Serb bloc showed no mercy. In the break, the Slovenes held a crisis meeting. Kučan knew if they walked out, he would be blamed for the chaos that could consume Jugoslavia. He offered a deal. Uslovi su bili u tome da ne budu preglasani u svakom pogledu, da se neki od osnovnih amandmana usvoje. Šta znači? Diskutuje se o amandmanu pa se glasa. Ne, ako još jednom ovako budete izglasali, mi ćemo napustiti kongres. Pa to nema smisla, kakav je to način? I to na plenarnoj sednici gde je sala 4000 ljudi tamo sedi. Na to su trebali računati odmah, a ne ovde nas ucenjivati. Ja predlažem da se taj njihov ultimativni stav ne prihvate, a oni neka izvole, nek napuste, nek nas puste primitivce da organizujemo ovu partiju. Nervoza je rasla, svi smo se znojili i onda je kamen krenuo niza stranu. The second before the final vote was announced, I was still at the speaking podium. Uh, when uh, Ribicic requested the floor. Nobody gave him the floor. He simply walked up. Ribicic, one of the Slovene delegates, had been primed to give them their signal. He said that, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Slovene delegation could not accept uh, the climate in the Central Committee. Da su se, na žalost, stekli uslovi da napustimo 14. Kongres Saveza komunista Jugoslavije. At that very moment, all of the Slovene um, delegates got up from all over the, the hall, from the presiding head table, and they started leaving the plenary session from one single door. To je bila jedna igra, prilično prljava, ali i prilično prozirna. Oni su čak tog jutra otkazali hotel. Pošto su praktični slovenci da ne bi platili još jednu noć, ujutro su hranu otkazali i su sklonili prtljak tamo po recepciji. He wanted to diminish the drama and he put it forward as something normal. Well, let's go on. I imam sasvim praktičan predlog da radno predsjedništvo sada da pauzu u kojoj bi se izvršila verifikacija novog broja delegata kojim kongres, koji sačinjavaju kongres posle 
odlaska delegata koji su ga napustili i da i da ustanovi novi kvorum. Milosevic's response was daring. He would persuade the party it could survive the defection of the troublesome Slovenes. His gamble depended on keeping all the other delegations in line. Ja se sećam toga trenutka da sam imao jednu da tako kažem pozvao mi Milošić da se prošetao. Tog trenutka je njemu bilo najvažnije da Slovence ne podrže Hrvati koji su bili najbliži. Jer ako ostanu Hrvatski, Hrvati ako ostanu Jugoslavija postoji. I mi nismo znali u stvari kakva će da kraju da bude pozicija Hrvata. Milošević je rekao hoćete li vi otići? Ja odgovaram decidirano da ako se ovo nastavi ako ne prihvati nikakav kompromis. Pitao me je, pa reci, šta tražiš? I on je rekao, pa reci, šta tražiš? I ja sam izgovorio da mi ne možemo prihvatiti Jugoslavijansku partiju bez Slovenaca. Milošević je gotovo šutio. Vidio sam ga prvi puta vrlo ozbiljnog, bez svog šarma, pa i duhovitosti. Mi se u tom trenutku dižemo i napuštamo imi 14. kongres. Tako je počela jugoslovenska kriza. Slovenci su bili ti koji su otvorili vrata jugoslovenske krize, mada ja ne bih rekao da su oni odgovorni za sve to. Postavili smo oficire Kosa na takvim tačkama da ga osmatraju. Negde oko dva sata ustanovili smo da se na graničnom prelazu nalaze najodgovorniji ljudi iz Ministarstva umutrašnjih poslova Hrvatske. Prva dva kamiona takvog naružanja su prešla granicu prema Čakovcu i ona su vrlo brzo raspoređena po našim policijskim stanicama na teritoriji cijele Republike Hrvatske. So began a secret operation that would culminate in Croatia's war of independence from Yugoslavia. Can you imagine a country where you can still find ancient towns ruined by a crystal clear sea? Yugoslavia is a country with a long turbulent history. After World War II, it became a socialist federation made up of six republics and two autonomous regions. It speaks five official languages and prays to an Eastern Orthodox, Catholic and Muslim God. This is no imaginary land. This is Yugoslavia. In 1990, the federation of six republics that made up Yugoslavia was still united. But with the collapse of communism, the two major republics, Serbia and Croatia, fell under the sway of rival nationalisms. Serbia's president, Slobodan Milosevic, had been the first to inflame his people. The Serb threat provoked the people of neighboring Croatia to respond. In their first free elections, they chose the nationalist, Franjo Tuđman, as their president. I glavni grad Hrvatske danas liči na Jeruzalem. Franjo Tuđman dolazi pred građane. Mislim da je u tom vremenu trebalo daleko više subtilnosti. Posebno kad se znalo da smo i one Srbe koji su bili za dogovor, koji su bili za Hrvatsku, dobijali protiv sebe. 
The bleak land of southern Croatia was home to large numbers of Serbs. It was here that the fuse was lit that would lead the whole of Yugoslavia to ignite. In the dusty railway town of Knin, the authority of President Tudjman's newly elected government was rejected by the local police, who were mostly Serbs. Inspector Martic said that this is a national police and that something that the Croatian government is just a national government. Against the Croatian government, which is a bad thing. That's right, that's right. Pa bilo je jasno dato do znanja da milicija u Hrvatskoj, odnosno milicionari srpske nacionalnosti, da će morati da prihvate obilježja, simbole koje su bile za vreme zloglasne NDH države. Serbs had raw memories of the last nationalists to rule Croatia. They were Hitler's allies, and under the checkerboard flag they killed hundreds of thousands of Serbs. Tudjman's embrace of the checkerboard flag was like waving the Nazi swastika in their faces. When Tujman sent his police ministers down to Kanin to deal with the rebel police, the local mayor, a Serb dentist, prepared a reception committee. Ja sam tada preko puta milicijske stanice u bašti kafića sazvao aktiviste svoje stranke i Inside the police station, the Croat minister tried a conciliatory line with his employees. Nakon ti moji riječi usljedila je jedna reakcija koja je bila vrlo ružna od strane skupine koju je vodio Mile Martić. Pa Perica Jurić je u početku bio prilično drzak i bezobrazan. Prema tome, iza potpisnika pisma ne stoji 50 potpisa, nego stoji srpski narod. Stoji ovaj narod koji ovdje se okuplja i čeka rezultate ovih razgovora. Tada nisam vidio u životu čovjeka koji se toliko preplašio kao on. Mislim da je u roku pola sata, deset puta odlazio u WC, najvjerovatnije je dobio proliv ili nešto slično. A izvana je par tisuća ljudi je na cesti oko zgrade. To je vriska, galama. I veli mi Joža kaže, Boga li ti tvoga državu im obećaj samo da žive glave izvučemo odavde. Jer je bio ambijent predvješan. Sa sastanka su otišli uz našu pomoć. Mi smo ih bukvalno izvukli. Rekli smo narodu da ih ne dira. A... The police chief and the dentist tried to turn the protest into a full-scale rebellion. Ja sam dobio zadruženje da se spremam i na oružani otpor i da od Jugoslavije dobijemo pomoć ili u oružju ili da tadašnja Jugoslavijska narodna armija bude ta koja će zaštititi ovaj narod. For a Serb revolt to be successful, it needed support from Belgrade, the capital of both Yugoslavia and Serbia. The president of Serbia, Slobodan Milosevic, was happy to stoke the flames of unrest in Croatia. The rebel mayor of Knin became a frequent visitor. Milosevic turned the request for military support over to his closest colleague. Mene je zvao Slobodar Milošević i tražio je da ja hitno primim Srbe iz Hrvatske, koji su tražili kod mene razgovor kao predsjednika predsjedništva Jugoslavije. That year, Serbia held the chairmanship of the Yugoslav State Council, the body which gave orders to the army. 
the Serbs from Kanin had found a well-placed ally. Tražili su se nešto uradi jer se približava vreme nezavisne države Hrvatske i citove politike koju Pavelić vodio prema srpskom narodu jer je i on počeo od ugrožavanja nacionalnih prava do genocida. Bili su jako uplašeni. The man in charge of law and order in Yugoslavia, another Serb, advised the visitors from Knin on how to run their rebellion. Praviti barikade. I to sam ih učio. I noću da čuvaju stražu. Ko ima šta, ko nema oružje, ima lovačko. Nešto mora da čuje. Znači da se čuvaja straža, nekoliko meštana, da budu budni stalno, da ne bi upali u stašovno. Iako nije bilo konkretnih obećanja od gospodina Jovića, osjećao sam da bi na neki način moglo da nam se pomogne. Armed with more than advice, the Serbs from Knin organized roadblocks. Belgrade television was quick to play on the fears of their Serb brothers in Croatia. Tri sata i treset minuta. Nalazimo se na poziciji na kojoj je stražu čuva. Narod pomalo, kako da kažem, preplaše i ljudi čuvaju stražu da bi zaštitili svoje živote, jer poučeni su nekim iskustvima iz prošlosti koje su se desili. I nastoje da se to nešto ne ponovi sada u ovo vreme. Djevojke u ljetnim paljinama vole Djevojke u ljetnim the crisis in Knin came at the height of the tourist season. We think the scenery is absolutely superb and Yugoslavian people are so friendly. Tourism, a vital source of Croat government revenue, was under threat. And the Serb minority in Croatia had blocked the key road and rail links from the Croat capital Zagreb to the sea. In the Croat town of Split, where the European Athletics Championships were about to begin, President Tuđman faced a dilemma. Should he act against the rebellious Serbs? If he did, would the Yugoslav federal authorities intervene? <laughs> nekim ljudima u ministarstvu unutarnjih poslova da sa specijalnim odredom uđu u knjin i da razružuje Martića. On je rekao, kaže, izvoli, uzmi helikopter i izvoli otići u knjin. To je nadležnost ministarstva unutrašnjih poslova, izvoli se pojavi dolje, izvoli napraviti sve da se uvede red i mir. The minister was uneasy. The rebellion in Knin was spreading. And he knew its leaders were backed by Belgrade. Ja sam ukazao, ali sigurno će nas zaustaviti armiju. Kaže, neka se usude sam. Three police helicopters took off from the Croat capital Zagreb informing air traffic control they were carrying equipment to the coast. In fact, they were crammed with Croat special forces, ready to join ground units in an attack on the rebel Serbs. Ten minutes after takeoff, air traffic control alerted the Yugoslav army that the helicopters were on course for Knin. Prenijeto je iz generalštaba, rekli su mi da im prenesem i da im praktično zahtevamo da ih vrate, ako i ne vrate helikoptere, da ih oborimo. U niskom letu su išli iznad nas, da bi nam dali do znanja koliko smo sitne ribe. I u jednom momentu se javlja taj pilot koji je koji je decidirano izjavio, veli, ili se vratite nazad u bazu, ili vas rušimo. Mi smo tada okrenuli, ova dvojica se okrenula i vratili smo se u Zagreb. President Tuđman was now sure that the challenge from the Serbs in Knin was more than a local squabble. 
Mi smo bili suočeni znači sa jednim unapred određenim programom kako da se podigne pobuna protiv demokratske vlasti. Zove me Tuđman telefonom iz Zagreba sav uzbuđen i kaže ovo je katastrofa. Nama ne daju da vršimo legalno izabranu vlast. Je li smo mi legalno izabrana vlast ili se nas ovde hoće srušiti, ne znam o čemu se radi. Sve se to diktira iz Beograda, sve se to sprema u Beogradu. Oni su to odbili i ispričavajući se da vojska nije dala nikakav nalog za pričavanje hrvatskih helikoptera, nego da je to bilo zbog tehničkih razloga oko dozvole prilijetanja i tako da. No, nama je bilo jasno o čemu je riječ. Round one to the Serbs. The Serbs in Knin now declared their mini Serbia a no go area for Croats. Croat TV dubbed the rebellion the revolution of the logs and tried to laugh it off as the work of a few drunken Serbs. This was no joke for a president who had been elected to restore Croatia's pride. The Yugoslav army had humiliated him and he had no means to respond. Zbog toga sam ja otišao kod predsjednika Tuđmana i rekao da mi ne imamo više šta čekati, da očigledno, a ja sam to i očekivao, armija neće naružavati našu policiju, a ona je prema zakonu bila dužna to činiti, nego da moramo to učiniti sami. On se s tim saglasio. This retired Yugoslav army general had got himself a secret mission. At first, he ran into problems. They approached us uh, uh, about supplying them with arms. They said they wanted to improve their police uh, techniques uh, and their police force. And I have to say, I did not hesitate a nanosecond uh, before I recommended uh, to Washington that we, that we turn them down. And we certainly did not want to be arming a Croatian police force so it could oppress Serbs. The Croats took their business elsewhere. Ja sam posjetio Budimpeštu i da smo tamo u dogovoru sa odgovarajućim organima Mađarske napravili ugovor o isporuci naoružanja. Kada smo mi Evročekom zagarantirali plaćanje, mi smo poslali tamo dva šlipira. The two lorries, loaded with Kalashnikovs, arrived at the Hungarian-Croat border in the early hours. Someone had been tipped off. Ja sam se isto nalazio na tom prelazu i osmatrali smo iz onog pojasa gdje se vojska nalazi sa jedne osmatračnice. Mi u stvari nismo znali precizno da se radi o uvozu oružja. Mi smo znali za nešto tajno što se dešava na granici i propušta mimo kontrole u čemu učestvuju čelni ljudi ovaj sud. The lorries disappeared into the night. Yugoslav military intelligence now began a major operation to prove who was behind the smuggling. Počeli su da nam postavljaju zasjede, počeli su ispitivati u Budimpešti i tako dalje, vrlo agresivno su nastupili prema Hrvatskoj. Rekao sam tim ljudima po prilici, ako ne možemo avionom, ne možemo brodom, ne možemo vlakom, ne možemo kamionom, možemo li mravima? Nastala je konsternacija u Dorani. Kakvi mravi? Četiri otkaše, mali. Svatili su svi. I krenulo je. Bilo je sitnih zapljena. Ali, Boga mi je dosta i došlo toga. 
Only the army of the Yugoslav Federation was capable of stopping the Croats. A display of force had been enough to turn back the Croat helicopters bound for Kanin. Now the Yugoslav High Command faced the fact that the government of Croatia was equipping itself to form a rival army. Zakonsku obavezu imo jer je to uvoženje oružja da bi se izvršila oružana pobuna protiv međunarodno pravno priznate države koja je međunarodno pravni faktor koja ima svoj ustav. But these arms smugglers were the democratically elected government of Croatia. It would be politically dangerous to arrest them. The army trod carefully. At the beginning of January 1991, an order was issued aimed at the Croats. All illegally held weapons must be handed in within 10 days. Croat ministers were openly defiant. Pa gospodo, zar vi mislite kad pojedine policijske stanice, pojedine općine odkazuju lojalnost Republici Hrvatskoj da ćemo mi onda kupiti dva šlepera naliv pera da bi pisali nemojte nas napadat. Moramo poručiti gospodinu Martiću da će hrvatski barjak doći u Knin i hrvatski grb da će doći u Knin. Message then phoned Belgrade to tell the Serb leadership what his government would do if an attempt was made to disarm them by force. Mesić je rekao da ukoliko se to ne prihvati što on traži, onda će uradit sljedeće. Tačno od A do Š da zapišem, da slučajno ne ispadne da mi nije rekao. Prvo, proglasit će odcepljenje. Drugo, zatražit će od Saveta bezbednosti intervenciju mirovnim snagama da njih zaštiti od nas, iako se oni navružavaju protiv sobstvene države. Treće, povući će sve kadrove iz organa federacije. Pitao sam ga da li su svesni da su odabrali rat. Fear swept the Croat capital Zagreb that the Yugoslav army was about to move. Crowds prayed for peace. President Tujman called an emergency session of his parliament. Prvo, svaki čin pravnog ili fizičkog nasilja koji bi bio suprotan Ustavu Republike Hrvatske smatrat ćemo ugrožavanjem Ustavnog poredka Hrvatske, pa bi se svaka represivna akcija smatrala činom okupacije. During the session, an invitation arrived. Tujman was asked to go to Belgrade to face the Yugoslav leadership and the army. Ljudi su me i sa suzama očima i s prijateljskog kruga i drugi uvjeravali baš u parlamentu da ne idem. Rumors spread that if they went to Belgrade, Tudžman and his ministers would be arrested. A osim toga, nema drugom, ni onima nasuprot nama, ni nama nego da razgovaramo i zdražimo rješenje. Čak sam smatrao intimno u sebi, ukoliko bi me ubili, da bi to bilo pred svijetom upravo dokaz toga da idu protiv hrvatske slobode, protiv hrvatske demokracije, prema tome u interesu Hrvatske. I zbog toga sam utišao. The State Council, Yugoslavia's highest authority, was the body which could give the order for the army to act against Croatia. That evening, they met in Belgrade to deal with Croatia's refusal to hand over weapons. Every republic had a vote. Mesić je apsolutno odbio bilo kakvu aktivnost koju možemo učiniti, a i drugi članovi predsjedništva su bili u velikoj nedumici šta da se radi, jer kao što se zna, to je bio trenutak kada treba povesti vojnu akciju. The state council members, waiting for the Croat president to arrive, argued on. The head of the Yugoslav military then made a seemingly innocent request. It was a trap. Nekoliko minuta prije pola osam, 
kad su inače bile vijesti, general Kadijević je predložio jednu stanku da bi bilo dobro vidjeti vijesti pa onda da nastavimo s radom. Like the rest of the country, the state council found themselves watching a TV program shot as the caption says on VHS without the knowledge of its participants. The film showed the chief Croat arms buyer talking about what it called terrorist formations in Croatia. Ima ukupno na petoj armijs prelasi 9.000 rešina. Da. To je ukupno i vojne službenike i militare i kraljima. To je 9.000. I 18.000 vojnika. Na cijeloj teritoriji petova, znači Slovenija, cijela Hrvatska i deo Bosne. A mi imamo sad na uruženi 80.000 za Kološinkovi. Yugoslav military intelligence, who made the film, intercut the material with public statements by President Tudjman. A što se tiče naoružavanja, nismo naoružavali HDZ-ovci. Vi niste u toku onda, ljudi moji, pa mi smo s njima na vratu. I po vratu s njima. S kim? S vojskom. The Serb chairman quietly reveled in the discomfort of his Croat colleague. Nisu prosto mogli svojim očima da veruju kako je to moglo sve da se snimi. U kancelarijama u kojima su se oni dogovarali, ne dogovarali, u kojima su govorili o stravičnim zločinima koje žele da vrše. Ja sam polazio od toga da je to sve montaža, da eventualno možda ima nešta nešta i istinitih snimaka, ali da je to sve s jednom tehnikom moguće učiniti. Odjednom su rekli da je to čisto montaža sa kojom se želi srušiti hrvatska vlast, a u stvari su uhvaćeni na delu. When President Tudjman finally joined the meeting, instead of responding to the film, he issued a warning to the defense minister. General Kadjevic. Prema tome da bi na njemu osobno bila odgovornost za krvoproliće u Hrvatskoj, za obaranje Hrvatske vlasti. Njegovim se dolazkom atmosfera nije poboljšala uopšte. Cele noći je drama bila svak svakoga je obtuživo. Kadjevic meni rekao koja treba da baci na koljena Tuđmana i to HDZ rukovodstvo, jer je to u toj mjeri učinjeno očevidno da oni na jedan krvav način žele da izvrše razračun u Jugoslaviji, da to ne može proći, a da ne bude u javnosti u Hrvatskoj. That night, the army's tactic appeared to work. Isolated in the Serb capital, the Croat leaders caved in. Tudjman was forced to give a promise. He would allow the Yugoslav army to arrest those implicated in smuggling arms. <laughs> he got back to Zagreb in the early hours, exhausted. Uncertain how his people would react, he did not tell anxious reporters about his promise. When Tudjman woke up, he found his people's fear had given way to celebration. Safe on home ground, Tudjman withdrew the promise he had made in Belgrade. Instead of helping the army arrest the culprits, he passed a law giving his ministers immunity. The chief arms smuggler himself appeared on Croat television to answer the question, was the film a forgery? We saw a construction, a falsification, on leaving the studio, the general immediately set out to discover who had given him away. Martin Mestreo i rekao mi je, kaže, samo su dvojica ljudi me mogla u sve ovo uvalit. Ko su ta dvojica ljudi? Kaže, to je jedan kome vjerujem beskonačno. 
a velim ko je drugi, drugi sam ja, kaže tako je. The general had been filmed while trying to persuade two Yugoslav army officers to steal arms for Croatia. Grupa koja bila okupljena je bila zaista od visokog mog povjerenja. Ja evo sad mogu da kažem da sam imao neograničeno povjerenje prema Jagaru. But one of them, though a Croat and a family friend, put Yugoslavia first. He had hidden a video camera inside his television set. Tako da nije dobro nekad ne imati ljude koji ima beskonačno vjerujete oko sebe u takvim poslovima. Croat TV mocked the impotence of the Serbs. Milosevic, Jovic and the Yugoslav defense minister with their motley crew of Serb nationalists. The Croats had got away with it. President Milosevic now declared himself the guardian of Yugoslavia. He persuaded the generals that the only way to save the Federation was to mobilize the army to disarm the Croats. But the generals needed an order from the State Council representing all the republics. To persuade the State Council would require the skills of a Machiavelli. A demonstration in the center of Belgrade, his own capital, provided Milosevic with a chance to show how the army could be used. The demonstrators, demanding press freedom in Serbia, gathered in the spring sunshine. Burnih izliva emocija, bilo je dosta skandiranja, uzvika. Međutim, ljudi su mirno stajali i slušali govornike. Milosevic chose to see it otherwise. Zvao me je prvo Milošević i rekao mi je da je čitav haos. I sam je govorio o tome da bi možda bilo potrebno da vojska pomogne. Borisav Jović, the most trusted ally of President Milosevic, was still chairman of the council which controlled the army. He began to work the phones. Very, very soon after uh, the beginning, the beginning of the demonstration in Belgrade, Jovic called me. To je oko podne. Negde. O negde, negde između 11 i 12 možda. He was telling me, uh, Vasil, this is uh, a matter of, of uh, of a uh, historic vote. We have to block this because a war will erupt. Uh, this is a true, uh, this is a completely illegal action. Uh, it is meant to, uh, to destabilize Serbia and Yugoslavia, that the army has to act. Vasil Tupakovsky was surprised because the demonstration he saw on television, though massive, was peaceful. He refused to vote for bringing in the army. Soon after this, the Serb police were sent in. In the middle of the speech of Mr. Paroškog, from one end of the gun, one of the guns flew, and people started to run spontaneously. Despite the fact that the police were almost around the demonstrations, it was logical that the end of the street would come to the end of the demonstrations and the police. The Serb leaders had first asked for tanks to be put on the streets three hours earlier. Now their case was stronger. Finally, about six o'clock in the evening, uh, when Jovic called me for the seventh or eighth time, I told them, OK, I will vote yes, because I saw that there are casualties. Others will come, for sure. Everything was getting out of control. It was obvious. We were watching the television.
nazvao sam članove predsjedništva koji su mi dali saglasnost da će vojska u stvari prošetati kroz Beograd i odvratiti demonstrate od vandalizma. Now the Yugoslav army chief of staff phoned the Serb police minister. This is a recording of what he said. Within the hour, Milosevic appeared on television to justify the intervention of the Yugoslav army. Danas je u Srbiji, u Beogradu, napadnuta najveća vrednost koju ima naša zemlja i naš narod. Ugrožen je mir. Zato se snagama haosa i bezumlja Srbija mora suprotstaviti svim ustavnim sredstvima i zato tražim... Milosevic had got the tanks out of the barracks once. Now he could take the next step towards deploying them in Croatia. It all began with a television announcement. Watching television at, at about 11 o'clock, even, maybe even midnight, something like that. Uh, all of a sudden the program was interrupted and we saw Jovic. The Serb chairman of the state council, the collective presidency of Yugoslavia, startled his fellow council members. He tells the members of the presidency on television that we have a meeting of the presidency as a supreme command. The next day, uh, three o'clock, four o'clock in Belgrade. The Slovene representative was too frightened to come. The Croat, though fearing arrest, believed he had to attend to talk his colleagues round. Pri donasku u zgradu predsjedništva dočekali su nas vojni autobusi sa predstavnicima vojske koji su rekli da će sjednica biti u vrhovnoj komandi. Colonel came up to us and he showed very dramatically and orderly that we have to enter the bus. To je jedna jedna predigra da je to pokušaj u stvari stvaralje ne impresije jakosti vojske ozbiljnosti situacije message was very afraid you could notice that immediately you know all set up like that in the back only the serb chairman and the minister of defense knew what was going on as the other members filed in we entered the the meeting room it was very cold i would say not not more than than 14 the presidency was there trembling before the before the military. The camera was on. It was never before we saw a camera. Cameras recorded every word, all part of the army's plan to intimidate the state council. The Serb chairman called on the Minister of Defense, General Kadjevic. <laughs> The Minister of Defense then proposed the immediate declaration of a nationwide state of emergency. The army proposal was uh, given in a form to, uh, that you cannot turn it down. It was the responsibility of the presidency to save the country from civil war. This, this was the explanation. And to most of us, it was clear that truly that kind of situation existed. The Croat would have none of it. Serbia can be big, but the space has to be the army. It can't go to the Croatian space without the army. And that's war. Ja sam ga uvijek pokušavao kao i sve njih razuvjeriti, htio sam ih vratiti u realnost, htio sam mu pokazati da nije krivnja na Hrvatskoj. Sada donijeti odluku da suspendujete sve to što je zakon i što ste naredbu donijeli. Izvolite. Izvolite.
The moment of decision had come. The Serb chairman needed the support of five of the eight voting members. He turned first to a reliable ally. The vote was uh, yes uh, by Kostic. I said next to him second, and I said no. Message was next to me as vice president. He said no. And then Jovic, yes. And Bucin, yes. So it was three to two when the vote came to Sapunjiu. So they had the four votes already, and they needed the fifth vote. Everything now hung on the vote of Bosnia's representative. With a mixed population of Muslims, Serbs and Croats, Bosnia had most to lose if Yugoslavia descended into civil war. The pressure on Begicevic was tremendous. He was a, a Serbian, but, a, but representing a Bosnia and Herzegovina, and a very much orientated towards uh, Yugoslavia. Mjovic started shouting, vote, what is the problem? Vote yes, vote no, but vote, Bogic, vote. Kod izjašnjavanja Bogića Bogičevića nastala je mrtva tišina. Sada mislim da ne bi bilo produktivno. Zaključujem sedicu. Bosnia had stymied both the army and the Serbs. But nearby, in the Serb presidential palace, Slobodan Milosevic was ahead of the game. He announced that Serbia and her allies were withdrawing from the state council. Predsjedništvo SFRJ odavno ne funkcioniše, a iluzija o nastojanjima predsjedništva Jugoslavije i naporima kojih u stvari nema, od noća si je definitivno mrtva. To nije korak nazad, već korak napred, jer je i gruba istina bolja od iluzija i obmana. Milosevic was trying to destroy the supreme authority in Yugoslavia, which controlled the army high command. Armija može da kaže, pošto nemamo vrhovnog komadanta, a mi smo prisiljeni da sami takvu odluku donesemo i da te paravojne jedinice suzbijemo. To je bilo naša formula. Milosevic and Jovic were seeking to give the army a free hand to launch war on Croatia. But they were unsure how the West would react. Američki ambasador Zimmerman tražio zvanično prijem kod mene. What I said to Jovic was that we were very anxious that force not be used in Croatia. Oni faktički se slažu sa stvaranjem paravojnih jedinica kojima legalna država ne može ništa. He said to me, Mr. Zimmerman, he said, and I think he shook his fist at this point, that Mr. Zimmerman, he said, how many armies does the United States have? How can you tolerate having more than one army in your country? How can you expect us not to react when the Croats are trying to build their own army? Ali se iz toga vidi već najava zvaničnog pritiska najveće svetske sile na našu državu, na našu vlast, The Serbs looked to a traditional ally. Ja mislim da ovo do sada nije ni objavljeno nikada i nigde. Mi smo se tada konsultovali kad je već i ja da izvršimo određenu konsultaciju u Rusiji.
In Moscow, the general met secretly with the hardline communists who ran the Soviet Ministry of Defense. Dogovorili smo se da on postavi pitanje ako mi izvršimo nasilno oduzimanje oružja Hrvatima i ako zapadne zemlje izvrše vojnu intervenciju, da li će nas Rusi zaštititi? The Soviet defense minister gave General Kadjevich details of their intelligence reports. These showed the Yugoslav army was safe to ignore Western warnings. Nije to znao ni, niko, ni jedan član predsjedništva, ni niko, apsolutno samo ja. To su naše interne stvari, mi radimo ono što imamo pravo. To su informativne stvari koje nisu nikakve odluke. Confident they could act in safety, Milosevic and Jovic went to the Yugoslav army headquarters for the launch of the military action they had planned together. Većina strašničkog kadra i vojničkog kadra i naroda, naročito ovih delova ovdje u sada u Savjetnoj Republici Jugoslavi, priželjkivali su da dođu do varednih mera i da vojska preuzme stvar u svoje ruke. Just five days earlier at the State Council, the Minister of Defense, General Kadjevic, had made his intentions clear. But now, when the time came to act, his fellow conspirators were in for a shock. General Kadjevic hesitated. I vojska je onda, kao što sam vam rekao, procenila da bi to bilo smatrano kao vojni udar, da bi to niko ne bi između narodne zajednice priznao i da bi to vodilo u potpuno suprotnom pravcu nego što bi bilo rešenje za krizu u Jugoslaviji. On je van sumnje želio Jugoslaviju po svaku cijenu braniti i tako dalje, ali... To da istupi sa oružanim snagama, sa armijom, da to učini, to on nikada u svojoj svijesti i u svom načinu razmišljanja uopće nije mogo akceptirati. Jugoslavia's senior general had dashed Milosevic's plan. Redke, ostake, oružje... Within weeks, President Tudjman was openly flaunting his new weapons. Croatia had chosen the path to independence. Milosevic seemed to accept the inevitable. He called a summit with Tudjman to work out how to carve up Yugoslavia between them. But the Serb leader had other plans. Smatro je da treba to da nas ozbiljno upozori da mi svoju taktiku ovaj prilagodimo, treba vojsku tamo rasporediti oko srpskih prostora, prepustiti Hrvatima da izazovu sukobe i onda zadržati te teritorije. The Republic of Croatia declares itself independent from Yugoslavia and pleads for the world's recognition. Pozivamo sve vlade i parlamente svih država 
da prihvate i priznaju čin slobodne odluke hrvatskog naroda, čin slobode kojim još jedan narod hoće postati punopravnim slanom Međunarodne zajednice slobodnog svijeta. Behind their smiles, Croatia's leaders were nervous. They feared that Serbia, the biggest Yugoslav republic, would crush them. The neighboring Republic of Slovenia also declared independence that day. The Slovenes were more daring and immediately kicked Yugoslav customs officials off their borders with Italy and Austria. Welcome in Slovenia. Welcome. Ah, thank you. Uh, have you pass? Yeah. Could Yugoslavia let its richest and most western republic go without a fight? The Slovene president reviewed his militia, aware that he might soon need them to stop the Yugoslav army from reasserting control. Пришел сам домой из Прославы, и когда был Джордан состанок Святого Словенского Конгресса, рано кончевал сам та свой запис, кое звонил телефон, и мне было споручено, танки сошли из Верхнешкого Яшнице. И он ее звал мне, да ему объясним, что се ради. Рекол господин генерал, Recite, šta se radi i da li to vi vršite agresiju na Sloveniju? Rekao sam, tanki so na ulicah, gledo z vrhnike proti Ljubljanu in že skozi Ljubljana. Ja sam rekao, gospodine prešredniče, nikako to nije agresija i mi nemamo tu nameru. I rekao, kakšni tanki? I rekao, to ni oklep, to ni so gosenice. I rekao, mirno spite. Tanks were rolling through Slovenia, but the president had reason to believe Slovenia might still get away with it. Two months earlier, he had had a surprising talk with the one man in Yugoslavia the army listened to. Slovenačko rukovodstvo je ocenilo da je za Sloveniju bolje da izađe iz Jugoslavije, da izvrši secesiju. The Serb president made a tempting offer. He'd support Slovenia's secession if Slovenia in turn supported his plan, allow the millions of Serbs who lived all over Yugoslavia to secede from their republics and unite with the Serb motherland. Vedu. Ali dozvolite onda, hajde da promenimo Jugoslovenski ustav, da stavimo sve narode u istu poziciju, da uredimo način korišćenja prava na samopredeljenja za sve narode na isti način. Kućan was wary. Kjer sem vendar le dobro poznal Miloševića in sem vedel, da pri njem človek ne mora biti nikoli gotov, če mu pokažeš prst, ne te je pripravljen zagrabiti za celo roko. Kuchan dared not risk everything on Milosevic's word. So, at 5 a.m., shortly after the tanks had begun moving, he summoned his cabinet to the presidential offices. They had to decide whether to fight the Yugoslav army. Vsi smo videli, kaj to pomeni. Da pomeni to vojno. Verjetno je vsak do tako, kot tudi je sam razmišljal, koliko smo na to vojno pripravljeni. Nastala je tišina. Večina članov je gledala tako gor v strop. Ono je že, če se danes spominja tistih dogodkov, se mi je zdijo, da so trajali celo večnost. V bistvu pa je šlo samo za nekaj minut. Ni bilo nikogar, ki bi odgovoril na vprašanje, ki je bilo postavljeno. Kučan je zelo kratko zaključil, ok, v redu, imate poblastilo. Predsedstvo Republike Slovenije je danes ocenilo razmere 
ki so nastali v naši republiki po nočnih premikih enotih v slovenske armade. All the army planned to do was retake the border posts. They weren't expecting resistance. They deployed just 2,000 untried conscripts who were split up into small groups for their task. It was a tactical error. Each army unit was now vulnerable. Slovenia mobilized 35,000 police and militia who quickly surrounded them. The Slovenes blocked every major road in the country. The thousands of Yugoslav troops in their barracks were trapped. Yesterday, they were there to protect the Slovenes. Today, they were their hostages. Mi nismo pripremali ni sebe, ni vojsku našu, da će to biti. Officers like the colonel, a Serb who had for 40 years served in Slovenia, saw their life's work shattered. Ja bih volio da vidim toga slovenskog vojnika koji će pucati u mene i gostovenskog oficira. Vidite kako sam bio naivan, kako sam verovao tom narodu da smo mi jedna jedinstvena zemlja. The army tried to push through the Slovenian barricades. They started airlifting supplies to their encircled soldiers. The Slovenes threw down the gauntlet. Mi smo dali zelo resno upozorili vojski, da v primeru, da bomo gotovili kakršne koli premike vojaških helikopterjev nad Ljubljano, da jih bomo tudi se strelili. Helikopter, koji je baš snabdevao sa hranom, poletuje iz naše kase. Mi smo čuli tresak i moment, kad je padao, kad je pogođen, kad je pao. All the helicopter had been carrying was bread for the Yugoslav soldiers. The pilot, who lay dead among the twisted wreckage, was a Slovene serving in the Yugoslav army. To je bilo moment kada vidiš da više nema šale. Europe faces its first test. As Yugoslavia's army moves to crush Slovenia's democratic bid for independence, should the rest of Europe stand aside? In Luxembourg, European community leaders were at a summit meeting. They were keen to show they could handle the trouble in their own backyard without American help. They dropped everything to deal with the crisis. The first prize is to hold the Federation together in Yugoslavia, but at the moment we face an emergency situation. The EC sent off a rescue mission, three foreign ministers, to persuade Slovenia and Croatia to back down. They reckoned the rebel republics would listen in the hope of international recognition. Fermo restando che noi riconosciamo la vostra dichiarazione di indipendenza e sovranità e l'appoggiamo, quindi però per metterla in atto e noi per riconoscerla formalmente attendiamo un periodo, si disse tre mesi, e in quel periodo negoziamo. Since Slovenia was now a war zone, they met in newly independent Croatia. Ma la cosa un punto singolare era che 
Tudjman, che in quell'occasione faceva la sua prima grande uscita di carattere internazionale come presidente della Croazia, aveva previsto una cena quando aveva previsto che noi arrivassimo alle 8 o alle 9 di sera. Noi arrivavamo alle 3, Tudjman pretese che si mantenesse il, pro, il, il programma e noi alle 3 di notte facemmo una cena in piena regola con i camerieri, con tutte le portate, da un lato c'era questa idea, come si può dire, di normalità, di, di, di cerimonialità, eh, così via, di etichetta e dall'altro c'era la crisi, tra l'altro sottolineata dal fatto che arrivavano in quel momento Kucan e gli altri sloveni che ovviamente che stavano in quel momento nell'occhio del ciclone e che erano piuttosto nervosi e assai poco disponibili a mangiare eh, tutte le portate. Jest praktycznie tak rad z Pałnicą i ja jestem tutaj temu premieru nie zgledał, ko są przyszli ministry, kiedy mi się czuwał, że prej, i tak rad nie zdaniem minister Luksemburga, gospod Pos, mi się zgledał i rzekł, jak upa zgledał, to kaj się dogaja, ja jestem rzekł, wojna je. The EC ministers soon had something to celebrate. They'd stopped a war in Yugoslavia. The Slovenes agreed to a ceasefire and negotiations. I think that uh, we achieved uh, the main aim of our mission, which is uh, bringing about a desescalation of the situation. But the army and the Slovenes kept fighting. The Yugoslav soldiers were getting the worst of it. I zvali smo Belgrad. Sjećam se, razgovara sam sa Žunićom, to je general Žunić koji je bio tada. I postavljaš na rovno pitanje, ljudi šta radite? Pa jesmo li vojska? Pa ovde se gine, ovde se razbiva, ovde nam ubiše ljude, evo sad oboriš se helikopter, poduzmite neke korake. Ako smo vojska, poduzimo, ako nismo vojska, onda stanimo. The decision had to be taken in Belgrade, the capital of both Serbia and Yugoslavia. The Minister of Defense proposed to the Yugoslav State Council that they launch a massive military attack. Mi smo Kadijevića pitali šta znači masovni vojni udar po Sloveniji. I on je nama rekao to znači upotreba i aviacije i artiljerije i tenkova i tako dalje, jedan masovni vojni udar. Za 24 sata bi znači bila uspostavljena apsolutna kontrola svega onoga što se treba kontrolisati i izolacija onih koje je trebalo izolovati. Ali to očigledno znači i velika razaranja, znači ovaj i velike žrtve. The state council members were about to authorize the attack. All they needed was the nod from the most powerful republic, Serbia, but they were in for a surprise. Ja sam tada vrlo jasno rekao da je bespisleno sa slovencima se raspravljati i sa slovencima ratovati jer slovenačka situacija je čista. Oni su etnički, imaju etnički čistu republiku, nemaju teritorijalne sporove. Jednostavno oni nama apsolutno ne smetaju ništa ako izađu iz Jugoslavije. I da zbog toga on predlaže da se donese odluka o povlačenju jena iz Slovenije na nove granice. Niko nije uopšte ništa kazao. A mi smo vojnici. Nalazim se praktično u nečem što se tretira kao vrhovna komanda. Znači mi polemiku posle toga ovaj nismo imali. Ja inače nisam diskutovao. Reluctantly the general stopped the fighting in Slovenia. Serbia's ambitions lay elsewhere. Mi nismo želeli da se na bilo kakav način vojno deo Jugoslavije konfrontira sa Slovenijom. Zato što kad su Slovenija i Hrvatska zajedno, onda je nama mnogo teško. Kad Slovenija jednom ode, onda sa Hrvatima možemo drugčije razgovarati. The Serb president asserted his legitimate interest in Croatia. Io ebbi un colloquio a quattro occhi con Milosi, che ricordo molto bene, in cui lui mi disse la Croazia non può andarsene senza negoziare con noi perché in Croazia ci sono 600.000 serbi. A mi ne osporavamo pravo ni jednom narodu da izađe iz Jugoslavije, nemoguće je osporiti pravo onim narodima koji žele da ostanu u svojoj postojećoj zemlji u Jugoslaviji, da ostanu da žive u Jugoslaviji. 
eh, o ci lasciano i 600.000 serbi con il loro territorio o noi non consentiremo che loro se ne vadano in maniera tranquilla e normale. Unlike Slovenia, Croatia had a large Serb minority. Here in Vukovar, near the border with Serbia, the real war in Yugoslavia would begin. Serb nationalists in Croatia had already seized power in a dozen villages. They wanted to link them up and expel the Croats who were in their way. Then this pure Serb mini-state could join the motherland, the first step to the creation of a new Yugoslavia, run by and for the Serbs. To this end, extremist allies of President Milosevic set about provoking a conflict between Serbs and Croats. Ustaške horde atakuju na srpska sela, na srpske žene i decu. Ustaške horde nastoje da dovrše ono genoci na srpskih narodov. 1991. godine počinjemo masonije da organizujemo dobrovoljci i da ih upučujemo na već formirane frontove, posebno u istočnu Slavoniju. Ranjena su... The man whose job it was to stop such intrusions was the police chief of eastern Croatia, Josip Reichelkir. He commanded a thousand armed men, Croatia's only military force there. But Kier refused to take the path of confrontation. He did all he could to make sure Serbs and Croats went on living together. <laughs> But the police chief had an opponent in the local party leader. The nationalist wing in Croatia's ruling party was as extreme as any in Serbia. Došla delegacija iz Zagreba, koja je bio prisutan i glavaš i zatražili od njega da uh, ih odvede u Borovo selo. Borovo selo is a suburb of Vukovar, the main city on Croatia's bank of the Danube. It was a prime target for the Serb nationalists. In the center the population was a mix of Croats and Serbs. But the suburb was mostly Serb and the extremists set up barricades to keep Croats out. On ih je tamo odveo, izašao iz auta, magla je bila. Otvorili su pretežnik, izvadili iz pretežnika ambrustere. Josip je samo gledao zbunjeno i ispalio tri granate pravcu Gorova sela. Prva granata je pogodila tanjuraču, tu barikadu nazovimo. Druga je otišla u kukuruzište, a treća u zid prve kuće. This act of provocation was committed by some of President Tudjman's closest political partners. Other members of his cabinet soon found out. Kirje posle svega toga došao kod mene. I rekao mi, u grupi za Borovo selo bio je gospodin Sušak, sadanji ministar obrane, bio je Vice Vukojević, tada pomoćnik ministra unutrašnjih poslova. Sušak, recently returned from exile in Canada, was leader of the party's extreme wing. His midnight rocket attack did not cow his Serb victims in Vukovar. They turned to Belgrade for protection. Borovo selo je tražilo da jedan broj naših dobrovoljaca tamo postavimo da budu u stalnom obezbeđenju. Oružje smo dobijali od Miloševićeve policije. The Serbs in the Vukovar suburb seized two Croat policemen. The Croats hit back. 
Došli su svojim autobusima u centar sela, Hrvati. Two buses of heavily armed Croat police drove confidently into the Serb stronghold, straight into an ambush. I bilo je dakle kritično ti prvi pola sata otpora koji su pružili naši dobrovoljci dok se celo selo diglo na oružje i onda su Hrvati bitku izgubili. 12 Croat policemen were killed, 22 wounded. That night, Croatia exploded with fury. Crowds burned the Yugoslav flags they saw as a symbol of Serbia. Što se tiče situacije u kojoj smo našli, Ministarstvo unutrašnjih poslova naredit će mobilizaciju rezervnog sastava u kriznim područjima. Mi ćemo znati obraniti svaki peda hrvatske zemlje. As Croatia and Serbia slid towards war, the extremists took charge. The war party close to President Tudjman were determined to put an end to the peacekeeping of their own police chief, Reichel Kier. They set out to get rid of him. Bio je u Zagrebu kod svog ministra Boljkovca i rekao mu da nema više kuda, da je gotov. Onda mi je između oslog rekao, ministre, pomognite mi, ja ću biti ubijen, povucite me u Zagreb. Ja ću raditi sve, rekao Kir, pa nemojte biti djete, popili smo viski, pa neće biti tako. Ja vas molim, spašavajte me i na to dođe k meni, a ko će vas? Pa veli, slušajte, on je spomenuo Glavaša, Vukojevića, i spomenuo u Zagrebu vrh koji je bio ministar Suška i ovih, jel? The police minister agreed to transfer Chief Kier to the capital, but on the day he was to leave, there was another incident. Kier drove out one last time to calm the situation. He was lured to one of his own police checkpoints. The commander was curiously missing, and a member of the ruling party, a Croat named Gudel, blocked his way. Nih je zaustavljao, niti pokušao zaustaviti, nego je ispadio cijeli šanžer na auto. Suprug moje je dobio 16 metaka. To mu je bila nagrada za sve mjesece rada i zalaganja. je bio u rezervnom sastavu policije i da bude absurd veći par dana prije je došao kod Josipa po naoružanje Josip je zadužio mu Kalašnikov i sa tim Kalašnikovim ga je ubio Two days later a column of tanks, 20 miles long, set off from Belgrade to the Croat border. They flew the Yugoslav flag, but increasingly this was the army of the Serb president, Milosevic. They claimed they were neutral peacekeepers and that the Serbs in the Croatian countryside needed their protection. The Serb media backed them up. One of the army officers sent to protect the Serbs was Colonel Mladic, later to command the army of the Serbs in Bosnia. U službi otačbine Socialističke federativne republike Jugoslavije sa mojim drugovima, starešinama i svih, iz redova svih naroda i narodnosti i sa svojim vinicima. But the Croats didn't find the colonel as even-handed as he claimed when he arrived at a small village called Kijevo. Kijevo je bilo hrvatsko selo, a iza Kijeva su bila srpska sela koji su bili blokirani. Hrvati preko Kijeva nisu dozvoljavali da bilo kakva pomoć stigne za ta srpska sela. Tada sam se odlučio da dam jedan ultimatum Kijevu. 
The ultimatum was addressed to the Kievo police, who were Croats, like the rest of the villagers. It demanded that the police quit their post. When they refused, Colonel Mladic ordered the regular Yugoslav army into action. It was the first time they had brazenly fought for the Serb cause. They pounded the Croats into submission. U Kijevu, otićete i tamo. Tučena je svaka kuća vatrom i svi sredstava jedinice iz koje je pružan otpor. Nije tip tučen ni jedan cilj, nije tučena ni jedna kuća da bi se kuća srušila. Once the army was done, the local Serbs walked in. Čini mi se da smo bili mnogo nadmoćniji u odnosu na Hrvate. Naravno, nekoliko kuća se u tom obračunu zapalilo, već kako to ide od artiljerije. The Yugoslav flag was raised as the army seized Croat town after Croat town. The Serbs had the heavy guns, but they also had a problem. Every big town in Croatia had a Yugoslav army barracks. The Croats besieged them. But they only had a puny army. So President Tudjman carefully picked his spot to make a stand. Branici Vukovar, mi smo branili Vinkovce i Osijek. Jer da su Srbi uspjeli da nam da laganije i brže osvoje Vukovar, to bi onda za Hrvatsko bilo znatno nepovoljnije. Zbog toga smo mi angažirali sve tada raspoložive snage. At Vukovar, Jugoslavia's conscript army was hit with a rash of desertions. Milosevic had to bolster his forces with gangs of nationalist thugs. Ovo je najjače ustaško upodište, kad padne Vukovar, ustaše nemaju šansi i razume se onaj koji je došao ovde dobrovoljno da se bori, taj zna zbog čega je došao i zašto se bori, njega ne treba ubeđivati da ide u borbu. Vrlo brzo smo stekli to poverenje i onda nam je režim dao i kasarnu u Bubanj potoku. Čitava jedna kasarna je bila samo za dobrovoljce Srpske radikalne stranke. I mi smo dobrovoljce okupljali u Beogradu. Tu smo dobijali uniforme za njih, oružje za njih, autobuse za prebacivanje na frontove i tako dalje. The paramilitaries ranged from criminal gangs to fanatical believers in the Serb cause. Šta smo mi? Tamo sam, naravno, pokušao prvo da budem politički vođa ili nekakav ideološki savjetnik, ali se to vrlo brzo pretvorilo u direktno vodstvo, jer svaki drugi izbor je bio kukavičluk, a to je valjda najstrašnija osobina u vremenu rata od nekog ko se smatra nacionalistom. Bokan Serb paramilitaries seized the village of Vočin in eastern Croatia. 1,500 people lived there. When Croat soldiers retook the village, this is what they found. Bokan's men had killed 48 Croat civilians, shot them in the face and eyes, hit them with axes, or burnt them alive, and left them on display as a message to other Croats. Važno je znati da li si izgubio ili si pobedio, da li si heroj ili si na strani poraženih, da li si jezikom međunarodne javnosti zločinac ili si junak, da li si neko koga slavi tvoj narod ili neko zbog toga tvoj narod odlazi u zbegove i beži sa svoje zemlje. The terror was calculated to drive out whole populations. It was here it became known as ethnic cleansing. The Serbs were the chief perpetrators, but not the only ones. These women and children are Croats. This old man a Serb. Both were from Vukovar, but moving in opposite directions.
The European community had set a goal of three months to settle the crisis. Two months had passed and the violence only worsened. Now all six Yugoslav republics were called to talks. Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, the Yugoslav crisis, which is the reason for convening this conference, is the result of unilateral secessionist policy, first of Slovenia, then of Croatia. Nema osnove za sprečavanje hrvatske samostalnosti pozivom na Jugoslavenski ustav iz 1974. jer je on narušen od Srbije ukidanjem autonomije. Postojao je lijep scenario, ministri Evropske 12. storice, čuvena lica koja su sjedila pored nas, a mi smo tamo negdje šest posvađanih pripadnika jugoslovenskih plemena, gledali se sa više ili manje mržnje. Having heard some of the remarks made this morning, um, it's quite clear that there are considerable difficulties ahead. We decided to see the people who really mattered, President Milosevic and President Tudjman, and uh, got them round the table and started talking to them uh, ab about what the future setup should be. Pa, u tom razgovoru kad je Milošević pokušao obnoviti tu ideju ako su Hrvati imali pravo na samoodređenje stvoriti samostalnu državu ako je ravnopravan šta on ima drugima to i njemu onda i kninski Srbi imaju pravo na samoodređenje da se priključe Srbi ravnopravan tretman ravnopravan status nemogućnost da bilo ko bude diskriminisan to su bili razlozi i naše podrške našem narodu izvan Yugoslavia is on Serbia. I talked to President Milosevic and said, uh, would you be perfectly prepared to, for example, to, to accept the independence of Croatia, subject, of course, to the uh, human rights of the Serbs who live in Croatia? Um, would you be prepared to accept that? And he said, yes. And I asked him several times, and he said, yes. Carrington set out to turn this verbal agreement into a plan for all Yugoslavia. But was Milosevic serious? Lord Carrington's bosses, the European Community Foreign Ministers, weren't sure. Also, man, sehr bald entstand der Eindruck, dass uh, die Serben die serbische Führung war. Auf Zeitgewinn arbeiteten, um den Krieg fortsetzen zu können. The Germans had reasons for their doubt. Milosevic's generals, unimpressed by peace plans, had just begun shelling the ancient walled city of Dubrovnik. When Milosevic returned home, they offered him a quicker way to end the war. Such an open campaign carried the risk of sanctions, or worse. Milosevic called in his war cabinet, both Serbs and their allies, the Montenegrins. Postojala je mogućnost ili da prihvatimo plan koji nam je svijet ponudio po principu uzmi ili ostavi, ili je postojala mogućnost da objavimo rat čitavom svijetu, I vrlo smo im otvoreno rekli, ako uđemo u tako veliki sukop sa Hrvatskom, ući ćemo u rat Nemačku i Austriju i Bađarsku ili ko zna koga, a sa naše strane mi nemamo koga da učemo u rat. Mi smo im upozorili da su nam Rusi otvoreno rekli da oni ne mogu da nas pomognu. Milosevic made it clear, the plan Lord Carrington was drawing up would allow Serbia to get what it wanted. Sasvim je bilo jasno i ta analiza i dan danas nije izgubila svoju aktuelnost da je odluka i opredjeljenje da se plan prihvati. The Carrington plan was the last proposal that tried to tackle all Yugoslavia's problems. It might have averted the bloodshed to come, not just in Croatia, but in Bosnia as well. Carrington sent his written plan to the Yugoslav presidents and summoned them back to the Hague. Gospodin Carrington, vjerovatno se plašeći da ne bude kakvih proceduralnih zavrzlama od strane učesnika, konferencije i tako dalje, odmah je prišao na prvo poglavlje haškog dokumenta i odmah je dao Slobodanu Miloševiću riječ. 
And he raised all problems about legality, whether you could just dis, dis, uh, member Yugoslavia, whether that was... I mean, everything that, that, um, that you could think of that he raised objection to. And it was quite clear that he was backpedalling. Milosevic objected. Carrington's written plan had one seemingly minor but crucial change. Milosevic had said that Croatia could be independent because he assumed he'd get what he desperately wanted. The other republics would stay in Yugoslavia. But now, Carrington's plan said each republic must first become sovereign and independent. Milosevic understood these words. They meant he would automatically lose his hold on the remaining republics. Evo, reći ću vam, to što je predloženo kao haški dokument apsolutno nije mogla bude prihvatljivo. It's very difficult, really, to, uh, to make any judgment of, uh, about why he felt so strongly about it from the arguments that he made. I mean, the, the arguments were not valid. Jer su oni jednostavno tim haškim dokumentom, potezom, pera, ukinuli Jugoslavi. For Milosevic, the continuation of Yugoslavia was essential. He had been willing to compromise over the Serbs in Croatia, but he was determined to keep the rest of the Serbs together, in his own Republic of Serbia and its tiny ally Montenegro, and the big prize, Bosnia, with a million and a half Serbs. If he let Bosnia go, how would he then achieve his goal of a state for all Serbs? I went round the table after Milosevic said no and asked all the others uh, whether they were prepared to agree. Prvo govori predstavnik Bosne i Hercegovine, zatim Hrvatske, Makedonije. A Yugoslavia in which all the Serbs could live was shrinking before Milosevic's eyes. One by one, the other presidents approved the plan and voted for independence. Soon, Serbia would not have another republic to stay federated with. But Milosevic was safe. If just one other republic said they still wanted to be in Yugoslavia, the state could continue. He was sure he could count on his ally, the president of Montenegro. He was wrong. We thought that it was enough i da pruža mogućnost da ostvarimo svoje interese i da budu jednako pravno uvaženi interesi drugih. Bilo je to odlično sredstvo da se zaustavi rat. To je izazvalo pravi jedan šok, jedno potpuno iznenađenje. U čitavoj sali je nastao tajac. Ja mislim da je muha prolazila negde tamo, čula bi se kako zuji. Koliko je to izazvalo iznenađenja u tom trenutku? Milošević je bio dosta zbunjen i nervozan i prosto je bio u vrlo jednoj šokantnoj situaciji. Wounded, Milošević walked out of the meeting and called on his power base. He sent a clear message to the Serb people all over Yugoslavia. Jer je reč o mogućnosti da se ta zemlja raspadne na više suverenih država koje dezintegrišu, ali dezintegrišu i narode. A mislim da bi to pogotovo za srpski narod koji živi u nekoliko republika imalo veoma teške posledice. Inače je to bila možda i najdublja politička kriza unutar naših rukovostava. The Serb leaders spent the flight home plotting. Za nas je jedina povoljna verzija bila da Crna Gora povuče svoj stav. I onda je počeo da zvoni moj telefon, značajne političke ličnosti tamo, pitali su je li moguće da si ti postao izdajenik srpskog naroda. Onda je taj razgovor trajao čitavu noć, stalno su zvonili telefoni, već su počele pojedine prijetnje. Narodna stranka Crne Gore zatražila je vanrednu sednicu Crnogorskog parlamenta zbog toga što je Momir Bulatović potpisao haški dokument. Očekujemo da će njegovo... ...usvoji njihovu deklaraciju kojom se potpis Momira Bulatovića na haški dokument osuđuje kao separatistička odluka kojom se deli jedinstvo... Ja ne mogu zauzeti drugi stav nego da taj haški dokument ne potpiše. Ako je kriterijum dobre vlasti u Crnoj Gori i od naroda prihvaćene vlasti, poslušnost i apsolutna identičnost s onim što dolazi iz Beograda, onda ovom narodu ne treba vlast. 
But Montenegro was a Serb satellite. President Milosevic summoned the Montenegrin leader to his office in Belgrade. Bakočević je direktno pitao ovaj kakvi su ishodi tih razgovora, da li su oni vama nešto obećali, nudili, da li su vam dali neku povoljniju poziciju nego da ostanete u Jugoslaviji. In fact, the Italian foreign minister had held out a powerful incentive for the Montenegrins to abandon Serbia. Era un programma importante, erano circa 30 o 40 miliardi di lire in vari progetti che per il Montenegro che ha 600 mila abitanti era una questione importante e dall'altro era interessato moltissimo ai rapporti di sviluppo economico con l'Europa, con la comunità europea e così via e quindi a con l'Italia che riteneva il canale naturale del Montenegro verso l'Europa. Bulatovic è bio o dosta categorico, non ricordo che è stato, abbiamo avuto un rasgore e i suoi nomi hanno obbiettato e hanno detto che siamo stati da siamo stati in alicno e dobiti. The Serbs offered Bulatovic a choice, face public scandal and political ruin or send a letter to Carrington changing Montenegro's vote to a no on the plan. I taj sastanak je kao dosta teško, nategnuto, sa dosta preznojavanja i Bulatovića i Đukanovića i da su oni konačno, Bulatovića konačno prihvatio i napravili su taj tekst, potpisali ga i poslali ovaj gospodinu Karik. Ja sam poslije tog amandmana možda bio malo manji izdajnik nego što sam u prvom trenutku bio karakterisan. The Carrington plan was now effectively dead. So Milosevic set about finishing his war in Croatia. He had secured most of the territory he wanted, but one city stubbornly held out. The Serb High Command sent its top general to take charge of the final assault on Vukovar. I onda smo doneli odluku da ne bi osvajali kuću po kuću, nego da idemo osvajanjem Vukovara sa težim sredstvima naružanja. Vukovar je stari grad, ima dosta kuća koje su pravljene od slabog materijala. For two months, the Croats had made the Serbs fight every inch of the way into Vukovar. President Tudjman judged the city was lost. But Vukovar still had a role. Croatia had only one friend in Europe, Germany. To win recognition, it needed the sympathy of others. Hrvatska je imala, kao što znate, veoma malo prijatelja za svoju samostalnost, sve do 1991. Još počkaj 1991. u vrijeme bitke za Vukovar. The people of Vukovar were dependent on a thin trickle of supplies smuggled through enemy lines. Deliveries dried up. So the Croat commander decided to appeal personally to his president. He set off to walk through the encircling Serb army. We had the happiness that the fire fell and it was like a small, small sumaglitz. We went through kukuruze, Taj put je trajao sve skupa 13 sati. Nažalost, dvojica poginula su dvojica momaka i u tome razgovoru ja sam zahtijevao od predsjednika prije svega teško oružje. I tražio sam da pod svaku cijenu dopreme minimalno pomoć Vukovaru onoliko koliko se to može. But when the Croat commander got back to the front, no arms arrived. He then went before the press and accused his own leadership of sacrificing Vukovar to gain international sympathy. I never said that it was not a slave. 
Pa ni sada neću to reći, da predsjednik nije poslao, ali je činjice da mi to nismo dobili. The Serbs were now certain to sack Vukovar, but the agony gave Germany a powerful argument inside the European community. The Germans bludgeoned the rest of the community into recognizing the rebel republics. They'll recognize Slovenia and Croatia on Thursday, regardless. Es hat sehr viele Spekulationen gegeben. Die Bundesregierung könne in dieser Frage isoliert sein, aber es war eine sehr sehr schwierige Verhandlung und ich sage, das Ergebnis übertrifft die Erwartungen, die wir hatten. Vukovar finally fell to the Serbs. Now they controlled one third of Croatia. The cost to the two sides was 15,000 dead and half a million refugees. This is Vukovar, just after it fell. not supporting any military action in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We were not provoking or supporting hostilities. Serbia's President Milosevic has repeatedly said that the conflict in Bosnia was a civil war for which he could not be blamed. But the men in charge of the murder and ethnic cleansing in Bosnia now describe his role. Kada je svaki put direktno Milošević tražio da se upučuju dogovoljci. Mislim, to nas nije trebalo ubeđivati mnogo. Predsjednik Milošević nije smatrao da je samo priznanje, međunarodno priznanje Bosne i Hercegovine je nešto presudno. The Muslims of Bosnia felt threatened. As Yugoslavia collapsed, they faced domination by their neighbor Serbia. Moram reći ovdje otvoreno. Bosna neće ostati u krvi o Jugoslavi. But Izabegovic didn't speak for all Bosnians. One third of them were Serb. They wanted Bosnia to stay in Yugoslavia, where most Serbs lived. In Parliament, their leader issued a black warning. Nemojte da mislite da nećete odvesti Bosnu i Hercegovinu u pakao, a muslimanski narod možda u nestanak. Jer muslimanski narod ne može da se odbrani ako bude rat ovdje. Evo umjesto gospodina Janović, gospodin Izebedović. Ja sam, osjećao sam da se približava pakao ovaj i kao da su se vrata pakla na trenutak otvorila i kao da jedan jezik onoga plamena malo prešao preko ni svih u nas u tom trenutku. Njegovi, njegov način izlaganja, njegove poruke možda na najbolji način objašnjavaju zašto mi i možda nećemo više da ostanemo u Jugoslaviji. To već raz govorim o ovdje. I još nešto. Takvu Jugoslaviju kakvu hoće gospodin Karadžić više niko neće. Neće više niko možda u Srpsko osim srpskog naroda. Očekivao sam da će dođu sukoba, ali nisam očekivao genocid.
For centuries, Muslims, Serbs and Croats had lived here together. Now they had to choose a future. Half the Yugoslav republics had gone for independence, and it was time for the Bosnians to decide. We were sami sebe doveli u situaciju u kojoj više nema zajedničkog života jer potpuna gotovo 100% odlučnost Srba je da ostanu u Jugoslaviji. A gotovo 100% odlučnost Hrvata i Muslimana da napuste Jugoslaviju. Tu se jasno vidjelo da Bosna ne može da opstane. President Izabegović called a referendum on independence. Muslims and Croats were the majority. So the president won his vote. So we, we, are, we are expecting the very fast recognition of the Republic. He was expecting trouble, but he didn't know it would start from his own side. It happened as the guests arrived at a Serb wedding. A Muslim killed the father of the groom. That night, Serbs hit back. Who is? Their gunmen erected armed barricades all over the Bosnian capital. Zahtevi srpskog stanovništva iz Sarajeva od jedan da se bezuslovno obustave sve aktivnosti od strane predsjedništva Skupštine i vlade BiH na međunarodnom priznanju suverenosti i nezavisnosti Bosne i Hercegovine. Neither the Bosnian police nor the Green Berets, the Muslim paramilitaries under Izabegović, were strong enough to take on the Serbs. Pa smo se odlučili da, da, da ne primijenimo silu. U protivnom došlo je vjerojatno do, do, do uličnih borbi u, u, u dijelu grada u kojima mi nismo imali dovoljno, dovoljno naših snaga da, da uspješno izvedemo tu akciju. The streets of the capital fell into the hands of the rival militias. The Muslims held the city center. The Serbs much of the rest, including the strategic heights, on which they placed heavy weapons. The people of Sarajevo saw war looming and begged their leaders to prevent it. Predsjedniče Karadžiću, predsjedniče Izetbegoviću, kao ljudi koji predvodite dva naroda, vi znate koja je u ovom trenutku vaša odgovornost. Mi apelujemo u ime javnosti koja se javlja masovno telefonima i koja predlaže vaš sastanak. The two leaders agreed to meet at the headquarters of the Yugoslav Federal Army in downtown Sarajevo. Bila je naravno ledena atmosfera, bilo je već jasno da su događaji otišli predaleko. To je takva svađa bila da se oni jedan drugom unose sa pet rukama u lice. Znate, ja tebi, ti, meni i tako dalje. Tako da sam ja morao to malo da razdvaja. Zadržali smo se jedan sat i kao zaključili da se sukob spriječi. Te večeri je taj sukob bio izbjegnut. Saglasili smo se da sigurnost grada i građana predamo u ruke mješovitih patrola, vojske i milicije, i policije u stvari. Mješovitih patrola. The Bosnian Serb leader, Radovan Karadic, had not really backed down. He knew that his patron, the Serb president Slobodan Milosevic, and the president of neighboring Croatia had agreed to carve up Bosnia. Rumors of this Serb-Croat deal have long circulated. Now those involved in the talks tell what happened. Rešenje ono što sam ja predlagao za čitavu Jugoslaviju da se Bosna i Hercegovina organizira kao konfederacija triju naroda da bi sva tri naroda bila zadovoljna. Drugo rešenje je da se ide na na podjelu. Tudžman now went for partition. Puške na rame. Na desno. 
In his capital, he initiated a series of secret meetings between the Bosnian Serbs and his clients, the Bosnian Croats. Karadzic reported to Serbia's President Milosevic. Everything was now in place for them to take over a large part of Bosnia. Predsjednik Milošević nije smatrao da međunarodno priznanje Bosne i Hercegovine je nešto presudno. On je govorio kako je Kaligula proglasio svog konja za senatora. I govorio je, ipak konj nije bio senator, prema tome Izetbegović nema državu, iako mu neko to prizna, to nije država. Milošević kontrolio je Jugoslav armiju, ali je bilo tako kleva da je uvijek 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 Bosnije. He adopted a more devious approach. I razmatrali smo šta će se desiti u trenutku kada oni priznaju Bosnu i Hercegovini i kad nas proglase agresorima da je naša vojska tamo. Samo Milošević i ja smo o tome razmišljali. Nismo druge uključivali. I ocenili smo da mi moramo da predupredimo njih. They transferred every Bosnian Serb in the federal army to units in Bosnia. This provided Karadzic with an army of 80,000 soldiers, fully trained and equipped. Milosevic could deny responsibility, but he kept his hands on the levers of power. We were told that they would get all of their material help, because they didn't have their own budget and any possibility to get them to be able to organize, to get a pay for the officers. Milosevic also offered his Serb paramilitaries, Armed by his secret police, led by extreme nationalists from Serbia, they were the specialists in terror. We never got a chance to get a chance. It was always a prayer. We asked for Milošević, we asked for Admilo Bogdanović, we asked for some general, for example, Domazetović, or someone else, who said, we need so much and so much for this place, and we get so much for this place. The first place Milošević sent the paramilitaries was the first place Milošević sent the paramilitaries was the city of Bjelina. The Serbs wanted absolute military control there. It was the strategic crossroads of northeast Bosnia. It's cool, man. The heavily armed Serbs captured the city in three days. Then, they rounded up the local activists in the Muslim party. Avijest se brzo proširile, naravno, kontradiktorne, neverovatne skoro, ali nažalost istinite o tome da se ubija civilno stanovništvo. The paramilitaries invited one photographer along. His presence did not stop the executions. He caught this man's last plea to be allowed to live. Sa ugorčenjem smo saznali šta se tamo događalo. I u sebi se kleli da se to više ne smije ponoviti. Pozivam sve građane Bosne i Hercegovine, dakle, ne samo muslimane, komi kojima pripadam, nego i Srbe i Hrvate i pripadnike drugih nacija, Izabegovic called on all Bosnia's police and militia to defend the state. The next morning, the citizens of Sarajevo, in their thousands, took to the streets, demanding peace. They saw the city's tradition of tolerance, more mixed marriages than anywhere else in Yugoslavia, at mortal risk. They occupied the parliament chamber. Vlada 
se raspala, narod je prepušten sam sebi. They opposed the nationalism of both Izabegovic and Karadic. The Serb leader could watch it all. His office was across the street in the Holiday Inn Hotel. He saw the crowd challenge his right to divide the city and attempt to march on his headquarters. I was taken off the telephone and told our police that they could expect that they would come to a great mass of miroforms, the so-called miroforms. I naša policija se obezbijedila da se to ne desi. Imaš ti paket, ti išta. Šta je svima, ali oliko koliko smo mi uspjeli vidjeti, i ovo se ozbiljno priča. Izazavi se, izazavi se! Six people were killed. In the city center, Long and Izabegovic stronghold, his police soon reasserted control. They arrested the Serb snipers in the Holiday Inn. Karadic and his followers had fled the city and taken to the hills above Sarajevo. They began sporadic mortaring and sniping to show Izabegovic who was boss. Kada su već ovaj zagrmili topovi nad grada, kada se grad već bio počeo, kad je počelo rušenje grada, Krajišnik je ponudio da se nađemo i da da se da se dogovorimo kako je rekao Sarajevo. They chose the now abandoned parliament building for their secret talk. Ja sam došao prvi I kad sam došao tu, onda je bio jedan mrak. Mi smo bili prije toga na neki način, kao prijatelji smo bili jer smo radili jedno vrijeme u toj skupštini i tako dalje. Tada sam vidio njihovo obezbeđenje koje su imali automate sa prigušivačima i tako dalje ili tako nešto slično. Ja sam rekao, znate, slabo mi je to oružje, u Srba je to mnogo bolje. Jednostavno sam se malo našalio. On je meni rekao ovako, ne može se izbjeć podjela grada. Mi smo uvijek razmišljali o podjeli Sarajeva, da bi Sarajevo bilo i muslimansko i srpsko i tu nikakva tajna nije. Ja podjelu nisam prihvatio, mi smo se pozdravili, on je meni dao za neku uspomenu jedno pero. The Serbs hesitated before launching an assault on Sarajevo. Their first objective was to take those parts of Bosnia closest to Serbia itself, no matter who lived there. Sa stanovišta srpskog naroda za nas je jedino prihvatljivo da smo nezavisni, da niko ne može nad nama da dominira, da brojnost drugog naroda, recimo muslimanskog, nema na nas nikakvog utjecaja. Da ne može da odlučuje našu sudbinu koliko procenata muslimana ima. To je naše pravo. In the territories where Serbs were the majority, they took control. But between Serbia and the Serb areas of Bosnia lay a region where most of the people were Muslim. In each of the principal towns there, Garajda, Foča, Srebrenica, the local Serb leader gave an order to the Muslim mayor, disarm your police and surrender. Zvonik, the crossing point for the road and rail links between Serbia and Bosnia, also received this order. Ja bih rekao da ipak ne postoji baš neki poseban razlog da se svi je tako sklanja u tom broju niti da izbjegava boravak u zvorniku jer narod mora znati da je srpska demokratska stranka brine o svojim građanima But here too the town police had been ordered to lay down their arms Svornik's Muslim mayor was called in and told the town would be Serb he had no choice I zaista mogu da tvrdim da nema šansi za nekakvo napadanje zbornika ni sa jedne ni sa druge strane. Može se živjeti zajedno. But the mayor knew that federal army tanks had already surrounded his town.
Milošević definitivno te uzima apsolutnu kontrolu i ta zvonička operacija je planirana u Beogradu. U njoj su učestvovale snage bosanskih srba i one su bile brojnije. Međutim, specijalne jedinice i najborbenije jedinice došle su s ove strane. To su bile direktno jedinice policije, takozvane crvene beretke. To su specijalne jedinice službe državne bezbednosti Srbije. Tu su bili dobrovoljci srpske radikalne stranke. Tu su bili arkanovi dobrovoljci. Šešel, the paramilitary leader, briefed Serb forces in this hotel. According to the UN War Crimes Commission, he read out the names of leading Muslims in Svornik to be killed. The Serbs launched their attack. The city's defenders were driven out of town within the day. That day, a UN official was driving from Serbia to Bosnia. He was stopped just outside Svornik. Me crucé con un vehículo del Comité Internacional de Cruz Roja que me dijeron no pases, no pases, eh, eh, tu le monde fou, eh? everybody is crazy. A paramilitary commander, proud of his work, let in a news crew. Here, the regime of terror is being established as military police try to identify the Muslims. <laughs> Y uh, era un grado de tensión absolutamente terrible y uh, en una de las curvas, antes de ser detenidos, uh, patinamos, el coche se deslizó sobre sangre. Uh, sobre todo había un fuego de artillería muy importante que venía del lado serbio del Drina y uh, yo vi incluso la, la, el humo que salía de las explosiones que hacen los cañones eh, cuando salen los proyectiles en el lado serbio. The Serb paramilitaries were mopping up as the UN representative arrived. Operacija je dugo smišljana, dugo spremana, tako da nije ništa bilo u nekoj nervozi da se zove hajde hitno treba ovo, treba ono. Sve je bilo dobro organizovano i dobro izvedeno. Entre tanto se veían camiones pasar con cuerpos de cadáveres, eh, vi en varias casas alrededor eh, milicianos metiendo cuerpos de mujeres, niños, ancianos en camiones. Yo vi por lo menos cuatro o cinco camiones con, uh, con cadáveres. Some 2,000 people were unaccounted for. Nobody knows how many of them were executed on the spot or how many were sent to concentration camps where the murder continued. The rest were expelled. 49,000 Muslims lived in Svornik. None remain. Five centuries of Islamic life and culture there were erased. This is ethnic cleansing. It became routine as the Serbs took control of three quarters of Bosnia's territory. In time, they learned to keep the cameras out. 
but ethnic cleansing continued. Ja ne mogu da kažem da toga nigde nije bilo. To je nekada više organizovano ovde u Beogradu. There is no one who can believe uh, what uh, uh, is mentioned as a, as a organized genocide, even organized from Belgrade and even organized by me. It's really out of, of, of consideration. I tada je svaki put direktno Milošević tražio da se upučuju dogovoljci. Considering the tragic situation in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we have no choice and our presidency had no choice but to appeal for a military intervention in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Instead, the international community sent a peace envoy, Lord Carrington. He put a proposal to the president partition Bosnia into ethnic provinces. Which of course isn't what he wanted. What he wanted was a unitary state. On je rekao, ali dobro, šta ćete raditi? Ja sam rekao da, da ćemo se boriti. Ovdje bih naglasio tu stvar, tada je Carrington stao na trenutak i rekao, zagustavio se i pogledao me pravo u oči i pitao, kako mislite da se borite? It was clear to me that the overwhelming military superiority at that time, at any rate, was with the Serbs. And they were obviously being helped. I mean, President Milosevic may have denied him. You know, in President Izetbegovic's position, he was in a very difficult position, there's no doubt whatever about it. Ja sam rekao da mi nemamo izbora. Mi nemamo izbora, mi nama preostaje jedno da se borimo ili da kapituliramo. Ako kapituliramo, bit ćemo pobijeni. Two weeks later, the Serbs finally launched their assault on Sarajevo. A handful of UN peacekeepers had just opened an office there. On the day of the attack, one of them was expecting a package. I sent my administrative clerk downtown. Uh, he came back about an hour later and said, I have good news and I have bad news. And I said, what's the good news? He said, I found the post office. Great, what's the bad news? It's no longer there. It's been blown up and everything in it. Serb saboteurs had destroyed Sarajevo's central post office, knocking out most of the city's phone lines, including those of the Bosnian presidency and defense headquarters. Three miles away, the UN's General Mackenzie indulged his passion for home video, even as he asked his soldiers in the city center what exactly he was filming. Uh, Victor, uh, Papa, I'm watching the uh, smoke from the downtown area. Can you tell me, is it in the direction of the presidency? Over. Victor Papa from Victor Charlie One. Yes, it's uh, in the direction round of the presidency. Over. From three directions, the Serb forces, backed up by the tanks and air power of the Federal Army, closed in on the heart of Sarajevo. The city's defenders included local criminal gangs, professional soldiers, even Serbs willing to fight for a multi-ethnic Bosnia. Kulminacija je dostigla vrhunac onog momenta kada su tri, četiri princke avera prešli most Vrbanja, odnosno most Skenderija i našli su se na svoji 50-ak metara od Skupštine grada i predsjedništa. Pucalo je na sve strane i u jednom trenutku moj telohranitelj je rekao da je on korisni da ide da se bori dole negde iza zgrade nego da bude sa mnom ovde na taj način više pomoći. Svatio sam da prijeti opasno da se zgrada ne osvoji. 
But Sarajevo's narrow streets gave her defenders the edge. Bosnian fighters with anti-tank missiles stopped the Serb armor in its tracks. The Bosnians then turned the tables on the Serbs and encircled the Federal Army's headquarters in the city center. The two sides had fought to a standstill. The general was surrounded in his own headquarters. Then, within hours, the Serbs would get a chance to finish off Bosnia with a single clean blow to the head. The European community had summoned President Izabegovic to peace talks. How long are you going to stay in Lisbon? A day. I think a day only, because I, can, I can't be absent, absent, absent from, from, from the state more than one day. Would you agree on a sort of a confederation for, for both? They, we don't accept any confederation in Bosnia and Herzegovina. We don't expect it. As usual, his daughter was by his side. Are you going? Sorry, are you going to start negotiations? Ja sam upravo tad se vraćao u Sarajevo. Krenuli smo, zaustavili smo se bili u Rimu radi uzimanja goriva i piloti su provjerili da li imamo clearance za za grad za Sarajevo. U jednom trenutku je kako smo se približavali Sarajevu, tu našu je laganu atmosferu je prekinuo pilot koji je izašao i rekao da je aerodrom Sarajevski zatvoren. Sarajevo airport had been seized by the Federal Army at the start of the war. It was still under the direct control of Belgrade. To pass through here, President Izabegovic needed UN protection. General McKenzie sent an officer to meet him. And he went out and, if I remember correctly, stayed for about an hour and a half after the scheduled arrival time. But no, uh, no President Izabegovic and no one out there knew anything about when the aircraft was going to arrive or even if it had left. So the UN officer left the airport, but the President didn't know it. Prošlo je pet minuta lijeta, vratio se ponovo taj kopilot i rekao da na sreću imamo ponovo Sarajevo i oni nam kažu da se možemo spustiti na našu odgovornost. Nije progovarao, onda je zovnuo pilota i rekao sletite u Sarajevo. Mi kad smo sletili ispred aviona nas je čekao jedan major Jugoslovenske armije. Ja sam pitao gdje su posmatrači, oni kažu mi ne znamo, oni nisu došli. Pozvao me general Đurđevac da kaže da se Alija na slepo spustio na jedan. The president was now a prisoner of the man his own forces had surrounded, general Kukanjac. Znate, mene najsmešnije kad neko pošle mene da ubeđuje Da on više mrzi Aliju Zedbegovića, ne moje ga mrzeti, ja imam najviše razloga za to, ali to ne mora da znači da ga likvidirate. Ja sam to z Vađića, on je mene rekao, neko ostajeno u pristaništnoj zgradi, lepo sam i tamo imati odnos, dok ja ne konstitujem presništvo i Jugoslavije. Ja sam, moram reći, bio ovako iznenađen, Iskreno da budem, nije mi to, ovaj, nije mi bilo neprijatno i čuti, ovaj, ali sam znao da to može imati implikacije i znajući da to je naš razgovor, ovako, što i da se sluša, ja sam mahinalno reagovao i kazao sam, pa valjda blago je, nije su ga uhapsili, nego su ga zadržali radi njegove lične bezbednosti u kasarni našoj tamo u Kukavici. Ne, ne, uhapsio ga je, ovaj, blago je nije u trenutku vjerovatno shvatio šta ja želim, šta hoću time da kažem i tako dalje. Izabegovic alone held the government in Sarajevo together. His colleagues there didn't know the army had seized him. 
Earlier that day, a group of children had been airlifted from Sarajevo. In this chaos, a worried mother, who happened to have one of the few working phones in the city, managed to get through to the airport. Hvala. As she got on the phone to Sarajevo television, the army was removing the president to a base in Serb-controlled territory. The evening news staff began phoning round to find him. And then my father came and said, you know, Nešto se događa sa predsjednikom, traži vas s televizije. Režim javljaju da imamo na telefonskoj liniji predsjednika predsjedništva Bosne i Hercegovine, Alića Begovića. I kakav je vaš položaj u Lukavici? Ja sam ovde praktički zarobljenik. Ne, evo, general Đurđe vas kaže da to nije tako. Zašto ti ne dođeš u predsjedništvo? Zašto što mi ne daju da dođem? O čemu se radim? Pa ne može to tako, samo trenutak. Alo, 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 to je istina. Na kom telefonu se ti nalaziš? Nama su pokidali linije, razumeš? Kako, kako ste ovi sad uspjeli dobiti? Pa evo televizije. Preko televizije, gospodine predsjednik. Ovo je radio uspostavljeno ove linije, ovo je preko radija. Sarajevo watched, amazed. On television, Izabegović appointed a loyal deputy to take over in case he were killed. Ejup Ganić. Naravno, to je jedno bilo veliko breme terita. Alija, samo trenutak, molim vas. Verovna javnost prati da je predsjednik predsjedništva jedne suverene i nezavisne države uopšen od armije koja nema legitimitet na ovoj državi. Beograd zna šta je uradio. Molim vas predsjednika, dozvolite predsjedniku da dođe na svoje radno mesto, pustite ga iz zatvoreništva. Gospodine general, nešto moramo da učinimo. Dajte, molim vas. Moram učiniti tebe, gospodin Izadegović je ovdje. Ali ja molim da nam se malo vjeruje. Mi tražimo da se nama omogući, da se izvučemo iz grada Sarajeva. Imate garanciju predsjedništa Bosne i Hercegovine da će put koji vi odaberete biti... Ali se da niko nema autoriteta da obuzda ove ljude koji... Imamo mi. Ma ima autoriteta, kako ne imamo. Preduvjet je da se... Budite sigurni da teritorna odbrana... Teritorna odbrana sluša predsjedništvo. Dobro, to čuješ. Dadnite tako upustvo TO. Daćemo tako upustvo TO. Međutim, mi ne može država... Ja imam dovoljno jake nerve. Mada je on hrabar čovjek. Međutim, posebno problem je predstavljala činjenica da je njegova čerka sa njim. Mislim da je to bila jedina noć kada nisam uopće spavao. Na drugom kraju kancelarije je bio jedan veliki neki sat vojnički. Ja se sjećam, ja sam ležao prema tom satu. Ja sam vidio kako izbija 12 sati, pola, 1, 2, 3, 4 ujutro, 5 ujutro, ja nisam spavao. Razlog je jer su mi kčerku bili odveli. Ja sam od te kčerke ostao u strašnoj brizi. The new deputy president telefoned the federal army commander and warned him not to harm Izabegović. Ja mu kažem, Milotine, sve je zatvorno oko tebe. Ptica ne može izaći, ispod tebe je prokopan tunel, nemoj se igrati sa glavom. 
naredite preki, dva, tre, ili će pojim se svašta biti. Vodi računa da se predsjedniku ništa ne dogodi, ti ćeš fino da izađeš, da govorit ćemo se za tvoje vojnike, ti znaš da smo sarađivali, smiri se Milutine, jedna mala greška, ideš u zrak da treba ići. They agreed to a meeting at first light in UN headquarters between the Bosnian government and the army. Pa rekao mi Iranić doslovce, gospodine generale, nemate zemlje u svetu gde je presjednik zemlje, zvanično izabrane zemlje, uhapšen od vojske. Kakva je to armija koja presjednika jedne države kidnapuje? Ali nema ni zemlje u svetu gde je komandant armije i komand armije napadnuta od tog istih snaga tog presjednika. Prema tome, ako ćemo razgovarati, možemo o jednovremnom puštanju i komand armije i komand armije iz Izđe iz Sarajeva, da dođu u Lukavicu, i gospodina iz Begovića. Ganić odmah skočio, ne, 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 presjednik je presjednik, a ovo ćemo rakiti, ne, ne. I was lobbying that we do an exchange of the two individuals and that was deemed to be a good way to start. I dogovorimo da se kukanice može poći Mogu poći njegovi telohranitelji i dva ili tri saradnika. To je Mekenzi ga podržao i ja sam to shvatio kao normalno. I onak je bio dogovor. General Mekenzi videoed the two negotiators as they phoned the army base to report what had been agreed. General Mackenzie rushed off to the army base to collect Izabegovic. The deputy president walked back to Bosnian headquarters, unsure if he could keep his side of the bargain. Ganić était très inquiet. Il m'a dit, je, il m'a dit, je suis pas sûr. J'ai peur. Euh, il y a des éléments incontrôlés. Euh, je suis très inquiet. Général Mackenzie s'est pointé au Tisati Gore au poste de la CIA au Slobodin. But before Mackenzie could leave the base. The army upped their demand. They now wanted their entire headquarters staff brought out of the city center. At that stage I said, hold it. There's no way I can look after a convoy. I can look, only look after individuals. And the president said, not to worry. Uh, I, will, I will guarantee the security of the convoy. But while he was sitting inside a UN armored vehicle, the president could guarantee nothing. His deputy was in charge. General McKenzie didn't know what happened. He came to some kind of house. McKenzie's plan was to drive Izabegovic through the Serb-held territory and then through the Bosnian government forces to the army headquarters. There they would pick up General Kukanjac and his men. The president and the general would lead the army convoy to the front line near the Bosnian presidency. Then the captives would be received by their respective forces. The president was reunited with his daughter. They set off through the streets which had, the day before, seen vicious fighting. I saw some unishtene tankers from the side, who were standing through a few small spaces on this transporter. There were tanks burning, there were engines blown out of vehicles sitting in the middle of the road. There were bodies. Uh, many of them, in fact, looked like they were sunning themselves. It was a very, very nasty, nasty scene. The president arrived at army headquarters where General Kukanyats and his men were waiting. The troops were frantically loading their lorries, confident they had been granted safe passage. Al niko nije da saglasnost da oružje, arhiva, svi vojnici mogu izaći. To je ostalo da se rešava kasnije.
With General Mackenzie's white UN car in the lead, the convoy headed out. It was surrounded on all sides by Bosnian government forces eager for revenge. Ti ljudi koji se nalaze u konvoj, oni su prethodni dan komandovali sa garantiranjem i pucanjem po Sarajevu. Oni su bili u komandi koja je rukovodila oružanom borbom. Oni su htjeli da zauzmu Sarajevo. Ta reakcija građana i boraca na prostoru Skenderi je bila spontana i tada ulazi do presjecene kolone. Ja mislim da je red Volkswagen Golf je drivao na kraju interseksiju i blokao i spletao konvoj u dvije. In the armored vehicle, General Kukanjac hid, but President Izabegovic peered out to see his fighters ambush the trucks behind him and seize the army's equipment. There were Bosnian army folks with their weapons pointed in the back of the trucks and the equipment was coming out very, very quickly. On all sides, it was pushed. I saw General Divjaka. Bravo, Divjak, bravo! What are you doing? He tried to calm down, to calm down the pushing, but I saw that he was clearly there. Tada sam pozivao pripadnike teritorijalne odbrane da se ne otvara vatra, da je predsjednik insistirao da se ovaj problem reši bez oružano sukobljavanja. Prezident Zabegović stod up, very calm. Uh, not in the least bit uh, panicky. General Kukanjac didn't look terribly happy. Ja sam imao oružje, pištolj, i ja sam bio spreman u toku pokret da ubijem Aliju i sebe. Kukanjac held his fire. The president and General Divjak radioed their headquarters and ordered the ambush lifted. They faced mutiny. <laughs> Tako da je jedno pola sata obavljen razgovor sa predsjednikom. Govori Divjak, govori Divjak da se predsjednik dovede u predsjedništvo, a da se kolona pusti. To vrijeme još uvijek nije bila ustrojena. Armija niti je mogla naša narađenstiti da svako pojedinca. The local Bosnian commanders went back along the convoy, quieting people down, calming them down, and people, poof, disappeared. Ikerakat, altu takbir. The president made it home. The Serbs, who had nearly extinguished both him and his state, now set siege to his capital. Bosnia became a member of the UN, but nobody would help her take control of her own territory. There will be no unilateral use, unilateral use of United States force. As we have said before, we are not and we cannot be the world's policemen. Milosevic sent the Bosnian Serbs a new general to run their army, Ratko Mladic. This is what he ordered for Sarajevo. Lord Owen, 
Europe's peace negotiator, arrived in Sarajevo, a city under siege for nine months. He brought a clear message to the people of Bosnia. Don't, don't, don't live under this dream that the West is going to come in and sort this problem out. Don't dream dreams. I took on the job fully knowing that all the key countries, the United States, the British, did not believe that this could be helped in any way by military action. This perfectly suited the leaders of the Serbs in Bosnia. Their forces had taken control of two-thirds of the country. Yes, I know that, for example, the international community has enough 10,000 soldiers, 5,000 in the Zvornik and 5,000 in the Posavino corridor, and the Serbs are ready. Srebrenica, today's modern city, is one of the oldest villages in our country. The unexpected trees and trees of water have brought people to build their homes here. In the first months of the war, Srebrenica had become a refuge for thousands of Muslims driven from their homes. The Bosnian Serb army laid siege to the town, attempting to starve its population into submission. In the spring of 1993, they began a final offensive. J'ai eu le sentiment que il s'agissait de balayer la région et de la vider en disant c'est fini maintenant euh, euh, ces types-là nous ont fait trop de mal euh, on, on les on va pas les massacrer on va les évacuer. General Morion took personal command of a food convoy bound for Srebrenica. But the Serbs had no intention of letting him feed their enemy. Donc j'ai tout fait à ce moment-là pour leur dire « Vous me dites que vous voulez la paix, je veux bien vous croire, je vous crois sincère, montrez votre sincérité, laissez-moi aller là-bas. » The Serbs gave way. They told Morion he could enter Srebrenica, but without any relief supplies, and they showed him the route he must take. Alors ils m'ont laissé partir sur cette piste, et... parce qu'ils savaient qu'elle était minée. Donc ils ont dit « De toute façon, il ne passera pas. » We set off, and uh, the good general, the good commander that he is, the ex-foreign legionnaire, uh, woof, all you could see was a cloud of diesel, and then there was a God Almighty bang, and the lead vehicle, the lead uh, truck, had hit a mine. Uh, and I can remember, first of all, it reverberated around this valley. C'était le seul qui était protégé contre les mines. C'est là que. Il faut voir un signe euh, du destin, bien sûr. On y croit toujours quand on est dans ce métier. When they reached the town, Morillon and his aid workers came face to face with the results of ethnic cleansing. C'était ininterrompu dans la nuit. Les gens marchaient en silence. And it was cold. I mean, the temperature there was minus 20 in the evening. It was cold. C'était un incroyable comme spectacle de misère. Morion immediately sought out the commander of the Muslim fighters defending the town. I said, I don't have any circumstances that I could have been able to leave the Srebrenica. I can't be able to leave the Srebrenica and we won't ever leave the last man until he lives and until he lives in secret and on the ground, we won't be able to leave. The Muslims welcomed the commander of all UN troops in Bosnia as an honoured guest. How long have you been here? How long do you want to stay? Having established the UN's right of access, Morion set off back to his headquarters in Sarajevo. A crowd gathered. Some were thrusting letters into our hands, uh, some were asking us to contact people, and then it was wind up the engine and move forward. And I remember you, with these things, they, they lurch. And it lurched.
Whether we were hostages or whether we were prisoners, we were not free to move. But the demonstration was not quite as spontaneous as it appeared. Al sam poslao šifriranu poruku Naseru da na svaki način zaustave da Morion ne napusti Srebrenicu sve dotle dok ne obezbedi sigurnost stanovništva u Srebrenici. For two days Morion was held in the post office. He had to escape. So he said to me, have you got a flag? I said, yes. Got a UN flag? Yes. And he said, I want a tannoy. Anyone got a tannoy? So a tannoy was produced. So the general was all the general with his, you know, uh, 40 David off cigars a day type voice. And he booms into this tannoy. I deliberately came here and I have now decided to stay here in Serverica. You are now under the protection of the UN forces. He decided to stay. Now we all thought we were prisoners. <laughs> But the general turned the tables, and they applauded. Kad se sjetim tijel trenutka, meni u ušima mojim odzvone njegove riječi, ne bojte se, ostajem sa vama. But if this doesn't work, general, what do you think it will do to the people? Because they warned you. It will work. It will work. Morion's promise had changed UN policy. Okay. Oh, I don't know for the color. He had committed his neutral peacekeepers to the Muslim side at the very moment the Serbs were closing in. His masters in New York were taken aback. General Morion took a lot of risks. I think some of the things he said, uh, if they're replayed now, uh, look a bit misleading in the heat of the moment uh, and perhaps would be considered by some as being a bit over the top. Morion's promise was quickly put to the test. Good evening. The battle for Srebrenica tonight appears to be over. Only the terms of the surrender remain to be worked out. The Security Council is meeting as we go on air in an atmosphere of extraordinary confusion. When you see the, when the massacres are occurring at such, uh, with such magnitude and the precedent that they set for the rest of the world, uh, our countries have a great moral authority to talk about these matters. Thank you so much. Thank you. The leader of the UN's powerful non-aligned bloc introduced a resolution declaring Srebrenica a safe haven. This would oblige the UN to defend the town. We were introduced uh, after a tremendous conflict with the major powers, fundamentally with the UK, France and Russia. There was never the slightest chance of the United Nations protecting Srebrenica. Deter attacks on, that's wording that is often used. Protect, no. General Morion was putting them in a very uncomfortable situation in which they were for the first time being really involved into a confrontation with Belgrade and the Serbs, and they didn't want that. The final wording sounded tough, but the Europeans had won. They deleted the term safe haven. Now, instead of defending the town against the Serbs, the UN merely asked the warring parties to treat it as a safe area. Those against the draft resolution has been adopted unanimously as resolution 819. The safety zone in Srebrenica. That will be a safe area. Well, what does that mean? Safe area? You know? Okay. The next morning, the UN commanders on the ground had to present the resolution to the Bosnian Serb general Radko Miladic. Mladic is mounted on his grand chevaux and saying, I am the army of Serbs, it's not possible to consider it as that. General Miladic named his price for not overrunning the town. I gave him a proposal that is in that process to finish the time to finish the time to sell the weapons to the Muslim side. And Mladic is raised and he was playing to play ping pong with a colonel Francis durante tres cuartos de hora, mientras los bosnios se metían en una pequeña habitación. Srebrenica's protector found himself urging the Bosnian government commander to disarm his men in the town. Ovaj, no što je on govorio da meni da se to mora uraditi, upravo onako komandi straži jer situacija je bezlazna tamo. The Bosnian government commander bowed to the inevitable. 
The UN claimed a victory. They had halted the Serbs. But General Mladic knew he could take the town whenever he wanted. El acuerdo fue, en definitiva, desmilitarizar a cambio de la presencia de una compañía canadiense en el lugar y a cambio de la rendición de Srebrenica para convertirlo en una safe area que en términos eh, serbo-bosnios era un gran campo de concentración rodeado y controlado militarmente por ellos. A week later, President Clinton opened the Holocaust Museum. Srebrenica had brought home to everybody there the parallels between Serb ethnic cleansing and Nazi genocide. I have been in the former Yugoslavia, and Mr. President, I cannot not tell you something. We must do something to stop the bloodshed in that country. Ethnic cleansing, what does that remind you of? And what is our responsibility? And who stood there while the Jews were being taken away? And how to deal with such questions, the international community offered up the Vance Owen plan, devised by two ex-foreign ministers. 70% they have a sort of horse. Lord Owen went on American television to explain it. If we're going to get peace by negotiation, then we've got to get these three peoples together, they've got to learn how to share power, and they've got to share the country, and we've got to stitch it together again. But we were not only keeping, or if I would say stitching the country back together again, but we were also going to reverse ethnic cleansing. Bosnia would remain one country, with ten provinces, each with control over education, transport, and their own police force. This allowed the Serbs local control of much of the territory they now held. But the provinces were so arranged that it would be impossible for the Serbs to form a separate state. It was a bit too idealistic. It was actually attempting to roll back a victorious army, the Serbs, by some 27%. Lord Owen flew to meet President Milosevic, the man behind the Bosnian Serbs. The UN had given Owen a new weapon, the threat of crippling sanctions on Serbia and their ally Montenegro if they did not back his plan. What is at issue is whether the Serbian people in Bosnia-Herzegovina, in uh, Serbia and in Montenegro take on the world. Well, that Sunday morning was the first time, really, I'd ever had both a stick and a carrot. The stick was the UN Security Council resolution, which was toughening up sanctions. Kada je Vensovenov plan predložen, on je imao manje više uravnotežen prilaz. What they wanted to know was in the interim presidency could the Muslims exert their majority over Croats and Serbs. Dobili smo pojašnjenja i predsjednik Milošević je rekao ok, u redu, nas ste ubijedili. They in fact we had a veto. Pretty difficult form of government instantly I have to say, but that was the structure that was on offer. I remember Milosevic sort of stretching back and saying, you know, I feel confident to or content with this decision. He knew perfectly well it was going to cause problems, but for the first time that day, he had really backed a peace plan in its totality. Owen now summoned all the parties to a hastily arranged conference. The Bosnian president, Alia Izabegovic, had already agreed to the plan. So had President Tudjman of Croatia and the Bosnian Croats. Only the Bosnian Serbs remained. Uh, 
But Owen was confident that President Milosevic, as their financial and military overlord, could make the Bosnian Serbs sign. Ελπίζω και προσεύχομαι το μήνυμα από την Αθήνα προς τους βασανισμένους λαούς της Βοσνίας Ερζεγοβίνης να είναι μήνυμα χαρμόσυνο. As soon as the formalities were over, Milosevic bundled the Bosnian Serbs up to their suite. He assured them that in backing the plan, he was not betraying them. Νέγο γλάβνη αργομένατε τα τόνα έτσι φουνκτιόνεσατε. Να σε τα πλάν προπάντε τόκομ implementάτσι. Μισλήμ τα... Oni nisu razumeli prednosti Vensovenovog plana jer su suviše bili opsednuti teritorijalnim pitanjima. On je rekao, zar je moguće, Radovane, da ti ovo ne vidiš? Zar je moguće da ne shvataš da ovo nije suprotno sa onim o čemu ti pričaš? Je li moguće da smo toliko glupi pa da ne vidimo jasno neke stvari? To je za nas bilo veoma riskantno. To je veliki rizik. Ja nisam mogao to da prihvatim. Jer sam znao da je, recimo, međunarodnoj zajednici dovoljno 10.000 vojnika, 5.000 u zvornik i 5.000 u posavino koridor i Srbi su gotovi. Nismo ih ubedili ni do 11. Podužujemo u 12. Nismo ih ubedili ni do 12. Molimo se jedan sat, za jedan sat sednicu. Svako nas je živ nagovarao da prihvatimo Čak su i konobari koji su nam donosili kafu pitali da li ćete vi ovo prihvatiti. Onda smo tom stolu prišli Milošević i ja i rekli smo im svo vrijeme je isteklo. Karadić u jednom nemom grču očaju uzima svoje pero i potpisuje. This is a happy day. A day in the Balkans, a day in Athens, sunshine, and let's hope that this does mark the moment of an irreversible peace process for Bosnia-Herzegovina. potpisa na Vens Ovenov plan, Srbi nisu izvršili samoubistvo. Srbi su ovim potpisom samo pokazali svijetu da će ostati i opstati na svojoj teritoriji, na teritoriji Republike Srpske, a parlament će reći svoju riječ. The Bosnian Serb Assembly was Karadić's escape clause. His signature in Athens had been conditional on their ratification of the plan. The members gathered at their self-proclaimed capital, a former Olympic ski resort. The Greek Prime Minister, Konstantin Mitsotakis, accompanied Milosevic to help persuade them. We had... Uh special parade, yeah, we had soldiers, and it was a kind of uh, very impressive show. It was for us important that Mr. Mitsotakis comes. That was a sign of recognition that we exist as a state. Karadzic explained his acceptance of the plan. plan <laughs> ali zbog mog parafa ja sam dužan da vam predložim da ga usvojite. Posljedice jednog teškog, tegobnog mira su možda mnogo manje od posljedica jednog nastavka rata. One by one, the visiting leaders drove home the reasons for accepting the plan. I cijel taj projekat, to je, braćo i sestre, jedan istorijski provizorijum. Ne postoji, ali i ne država. A da se suprotnoj odluci raduju naši neprijatelji na čelu sa Turskom koja je to već izvanično saopštila. Mi na to kto nise desinara i da ide na to kto nun. Nemojte danas izvršiti samoubistvo. The Bosnian Serbs very own Napoleon, general Mladic, 
branded as a war criminal by the world's media, had been stopped by a rock fall on his way to the assembly. I karte koje je on podnosio, gledali smo se predsjednik Milošević i ja, nismo znali o čemu taj čovjek priča. I ovo je rezultat našega rukovodstva, našega naroda i naše vojske. Toliko je bilo jasno kada je on iznio dve mape i preko ove mape faktičkog stanja bila jedna folija na kojoj su bile ucrtane provincije, pa su poslanici vrlo jasno mogli da vide vizuelno i ne razmišljajući šta Vensovenov plan teritorijalno daje Srbima. Tesnik Milošević mi pitao, zašto ti ponovo ne govoriš? Kažem ja, pitao sam, a šta da im kažem? Pa kaže da ih ubediš da prihvate. Ja sam rekao, prvo moram ja da budem ubeđen da prihvate. Snubbed by the leader he himself had put in power, Milošević rose to speak. It almost seemed that he would change the opinion of everybody. Smatram da odluka za mir nema alternativu. Smatram da je odluka za mir i osnaženje potpisa koji je stavio Radovan Karadžić u Atini odluka u interesu srpskog naroda u Bosni i u interesu celog srpskog naroda. He said that one can sacrifice for one's nation everything except the nation itself. And if you don't accept the Vance Owen plan, you are going to sacrifice your people. I was a mutisak that tada nije objavljena pauza da bi poslanici počeli da snaže argumente i da donesu pozitivnu odluku. In open defiance of Milosevic, the Bosnian Serb Assembly went into closed session. Milosevic and I have tried to get into the Poslanic Club, but they did not let us go. Only then we realized that the decision was definitely negative. He didn't say almost anything, he said we are leaving, and that's it, please, the car, and that's it. The Vance Owen plan was dead, and with it the last hope for a united, multi-ethnic Bosnia. The Serbs could now continue to build their independent state. In the south, the Bosnian Croats, who had been in alliance with the Muslims, also began to carve out their own state. Imali smo vrlo jedan, jedan težak front ovde sa Četnicima u Bosni i Hercegovini, dugačak barem, barem hiljadu kilometara. Ja sam činio sve da se ne otvori i drugi front koji je stalno više u zraku. President Izabegović was desperate to hold on to his ally. He traveled through Serb lines to meet the commander of the Bosnian Croat army in Mostar. Ujutro smo se dogovorili, on je u jedan stan na nekom četvrtom katu, ujutro došao zapravo, je to stara cipa koji popili smo kavu. Ja sam taj dan imao dogovoran razgovor s njime o nekim našim problemima dole u Hercegovini, jer je i tu situacija bila između nas, dosta teška između armije i HVO-a. Gledajte, ne treba kriti činjenicu da narod u Hercegovini bi bio najsretniji da Hercegovina i cijeli dio pripadne Hrvatskoj. Vidjelo se da Boban i njegovi ljudi idu na sukob. Idu na sukob zato da ocijepe komad Bosne i Hercegovine, da je pripoje Hrvatskoj. Jasno je taj plan bio skoro jasan. There was good reason to be afraid. The Croat president and his Serb counterpart had long toyed with dividing Bosnia between them. A year before, a television crew had chanced on the Bosnian Serb leader in Austria. 
He was there for a secret meeting with the more discreet leader of the Bosnian Croats, who had arrived in this car. The two leaders met behind these doors. To je bio jedan vrlo dobar koristan razgovor. Boban je smatrao da Hrvati treba da se koncentrišu na svojim teritorijama. Hrvatska Bosna je e, kao ideja bez imena e, bila trajno u hrvatskom narodu u Bosni i Hercegovini. Jednostavno došli smo do saznanja da postoje neke, neke teritorije koje su sporne, ali da ne vredi da ginu momci za to. Niti ćemo mi Srbi dobiti sve što želimo. Niti će Hrvati dobiti sve što žele. I sastanak je trajao u smislu da su Srbi kazali da je njihova vojno, vojna opcija da granica Srbije mora biti rijeka Neretva. The Bosnian Croats turned on their former Muslim allies. The battle was orchestrated by the commander in chief of all Croat forces. Ja sam naredio da ne šaljemo eh, hrvatske postrojbe u unutrašnjost Bosne sve tamo do Dervente do boja radi sprečavanja eh, ne, nego li da da se ograničimo, ograničimo na na obranu hrvatskih područja. Muslim villages stood in their way. The Croat army had for a year been bolstered by thousands of Muslim fighters. Now the Croats interned their former comrades. Dakle razoružavanja kad su logori postali, ovaj kad kad je dakle neki ljudi trebalo staviti, sećam se da sam gospodinu Bruni Stojić koji je bio ministar obrane rekao Bruno pazite dobro Nemojte raditi nešto čega ćemo se stiditi. At a military airport near Mostar, a journalist talked his way into one of the camps. Tad su svi ljudi bili dovedeni u te tankove, u te cisterne, praktično u te skladišta za benzin koja je koristila, koristila bivša Jugoslovenska narodna armija, gdje je bio taj, bila kasarna jedna. To su bili e, skladišta u zemlji, u brežuljcima, a bile su ogromne vrućine i imali su samo jedan mali otvorčić od 20 cm kvadratnih kroz kojih je ulazio zrak. Ljudi su bukvalno umirali. To je jednostavno jedna vrsta ludila i pogreške koja se dogodi kad bude puno naših momaka masakrirano i tako dalje u zavre ta krv do granica kad se evo onda ne promišljaju u stvari do te mjere da se onda napravi jedan lobar kojeg se treba stiljeti kao čovjek i kao Hrvat Responsibility for the camps went right to the top of the Croat government Postojanje logora nije moglo biti bez znanja predsjednika Tuđmana onda sam ja ispomenuo logore i tko to ko to organizira on kaže ne možemo se mi hrvati samo optuživati možda ima nešto ali ali i drugi imaju logore to nije to nije bilo opravdanje driven on by the fear of total annihilation the lightly armed muslims fought back the croat advance was broken In retaliation, the Croats targeted the Mostar bridge, which Muslims had built 400 years earlier. It was four years to the day since the Berlin Wall had come down, ushering in the new world order. But in the case of Bosnia, 
two American administrations had stood by, leaving the Europeans to police their own continent. There will be no unilateral use of United States force. As we have said before, we are not and we cannot be the world's policemen. The United States is not prepared uh, to put uh, ground troops uh, into Bosnia in order to uh, resolve or impose a solution onto the conflict there. The Americans decided it was time to weigh in. The strategy was to isolate the Serbs by first settling the war between the Muslims and the Croats. If you lined up all of the territorial issues that were on the table, and then you said how many of those would go away if we had a Muslim-Croat federation supported by Croatia, a huge, huge portion of them disappeared off the table. The Americans applied some strong arm tactics. President Tujman was warned that if he continued his war against the Muslims, Croatia too would face UN sanctions. It would leave uh, Croatia essentially isolated in the Balkans, uh, along with uh, probably uh, Serbia equally isolated. Uh, and uh, that didn't seem to be a particularly desirable long-term outcome for a country like Croatia. The Americans knew that Tujman wanted to take back territories held by the Serbs in Croatia. To do so, he would need American support. President Tujman risked having no support from the international community in its own efforts to recover the 27% of Croatia that's under uh, Serbian occupation. Tujman chose the American way. Within weeks, President Clinton presided over a diplomatic triumph. The presidents of Croatia and Bosnia signed an alliance to end one of Bosnia's wars. The world was reminded of the other by an explosion in Sarajevo. Sixty-eight people died. I have just completed um, a meeting with advisors discussing the, the terrible and outrageous incident uh, in Sarajevo yesterday. Have you decided against airstrikes, Mr. President? No. Uh, but the authority under which airstrikes can proceed requires the common agreement of our NATO allies. Which uh, resulted then on Monday already uh, in Peter Tarnoff and myself being uh, launched uh, to Europe to actually meet with the allies and get this thing going. Britain was the problem. The foreign secretary faced an emergency meeting of cabinet. Key colleagues remained implacably opposed to any move that could draw the UK into conflict with the Serbs. I had to say, look, we're not just dealing with Bosnia, we're dealing with the Atlantic Alliance. And there comes a point uh, when if we are to keep the Alliance in reasonable repair, uh, we have to go along with things which we believe are risky. The British went along. NATO issued an ultimatum to the Serbs. They had 10 days to withdraw their heavy weapons from the hills around Sarajevo. Serbi nikad nisu primali ultimatum, ni od koga niti prihvatali pa neće ni u budući. I nema potrebe nama ultimatum da se Ne priti razliku između ova dva. Nije nama ultimatum nikakva I ja sam odbio ultimatum jer je to bio put za dalja poniženja i za dalje iznuđivanje poteza od strane NATO pakta. With four days of the ultimatum to run, John Major arrived in Moscow for a previously arranged summit. The Russians were furious about the NATO threat against their clients, the Serbs. 
when uh, uh, the NATO ultimatum came, we were very worried that uh, the whole thing could, uh, uh, the, the place could be blown apart. What they were attacking was the fact that they hadn't been warned. And I sent a message, uh, either from Moscow or immediately I came back to Warren Christopher and said, watch it. I mean, th th this is, uh, there is I, I use the phrase, extreme irritation. I wasn't saying to the Russians, keep out, this is obvious, it's not at all. I was saying, here is why we in NATO have acted as we have, here is the background, here are the prospects, please play your part. The challenge was to Yeltsin's taste. What they did not do was tell us of their own impending initiative. Please, please wait a little bit, so maybe 30 minutes, and uh, after that, I think we're going to have something to say. Within hours, the special envoy was in the Bosnian Serb capital with a letter from the Russian president. They read it aloud, and I, I could hear the, uh, I, could, I could see the impression the whole thing produced when there was Russian, uh, the letter of the Russian president, where he requested more and more that they do the right thing. Russia was asking them not to go into confrontation and uh, to pull back, and uh, as an assurance to them, uh, we would be prepared to move uh, our troops uh, uh, into the into the area. Many a bit of little Russian to the president Yeltsin umiesao, bilo mi vrlo važno da se da dođu ruske trupe. On the last day of the ultimatum, columns of Russian troops moved in. Their presence in the areas around Sarajevo made a NATO strike all but impossible. Very good. The Serbs now complied and withdrew their heavy weapons. For the first time in 18 months, the people of Sarajevo could safely walk their streets. The Serbs had been bullied, in Sarajevo at least, into peace. Today, we are dedicating the future site of the American Embassy in Sarajevo, the undivided capital of the independent and sovereign state of Bosnia and Herzegovina. I would like to repeat the words stated more than 30 years ago by President Kennedy, Yasam Sarayevka. But Sarajevo was not Berlin. When the Serbs tested Western resolve, the alliance was stretched to breaking point. Dalje sam htio da saveznicima muslimana, pre svega amerikancima, pokažem da smo mi superiorni i da ćemo da skršimo njihovu vojnu, vojnu moć. The place he chose was the most important of the Muslim enclaves in eastern Bosnia, Gorazde. Like Srebrenica, it had been designated a UN safe area. I was waking up at four o'clock in the morning uh, on the 5th of uh, April and told that tanks had attacked into the town of Gorazda, that the town was in flames. The report was exaggerated, but Serb shells were landing in the town. General Rose decided no military action was required. The Security Council resolution uh, requires us to deter attacks against safe areas. Now, deterring is not the same as defending or protecting. The senior military officers were haunted by the fact that it was very unclear what would happen after an initial uh, airstrike. When two Serb tanks reached the town itself, General Rose judged the time had come 
for deterrence. I got the target on my nose. Hey, what are you aiming at, Jim? I'm at an eight, right at a ten. We have bomb splash, bomb splash. The first airstrike in NATO history hit a tent, the local Serb command post. The Serbs were not deterred for long. Their commander, General Miladic, retaliated by surrounding 150 UN personnel on his territory. They became his hostages. He raged on the telephone for 20 minutes. He was straining to, to not um, allow uh, any single member of UNPROFOR to leave his territory alive. It brought home to us the limits and the difficulties of using air power when you had such exposed forces on the ground. The UN sent a high-level delegation to negotiate for the release of their hostages with the Bosnian Serbs. Just after the salad, as it were, um, we got an urgent message saying that uh, General Rose was, was trying to get through. Michael, I'm here. A desperate General Rose had to use an open radio to reach his superiors. He told them that while they had been supping with the Bosnian Serb leaders, his troops in Garajde were being fired on by Serb gunners. Uh, the situation has deteriorated very rapidly while you've been uh, in the meeting. They're firing on us on our guys. We need air support now. Over. We embarked on one of the most surreal experiences of my of my UN peacekeeping career. Tamo je na jednom kraju vojni komandant Uprofora, na drugom kraju vojni komandant Srba, a politički vođa i Srba i Uprofora je bio tu sa dve mape, sa dva telefona. Abbas, Dr. Kaj, ordering immediate ceasefire. Sir, I don't think that by the time the message gets to the units on the ground, they will all be either dead or captured. Over. We ourselves were in the room with the soldier holding on to walkie-talkie in which essentially the UN commander was, was thinking of calling in uh, planes to bomb the people whom Mr. Karadzic was just talking to. General Mladic told his leader that his guns were targeting the town and not UN positions. If UN soldiers were being shelled, it was their own fault. I posle izvršnog vremena Akaši je došao veoma pošteno i rekao da, zaista vi ste u pravu. The UN had no choice but to call off the airstrike. They sent a helicopter to pick up one dying British soldier. But the Serb offensive continued. That night, the Bosnian government summoned Mr. Akashi and General Rose to explain themselves. What is their attack now again? The chance that they did all day. I mean, you understand our position because yes. we've been saying this to you and General Rose since two weeks now. <laughs> this is I'm sorry, but this is... No, 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 I mean, you are right. You know, it has become a laughable matter. It had a certain key. Primitivci oko Gorazda, dakle, iz redova te srpske vojske, shvatili da oni mogu ovaj, jednostavno izaći na kraj sa NATO-om, da im niko ne može ništa i tako dalje. The Americans were determined to reassert their credibility. By shelling a hospital, shelling uh, the UN headquarters, taking United Nations hostages when we have never been involved in the war against them, when all we did was to do what we said we would do all along, which is if they threatened our people, we would use air power. Uh, they are... They are the complete aggressors and wrongdoers. President Clinton demanded NATO strike immediately. I did receive high-level calls clamoring for a war to be waged against the Bosnian Serb side. Yes, um, on April 20th, we, Prime Minister and I, were alarmed. There were reports that, uh, which were exaggerated, that we were uh, alone and opposing. Uh, what was being uh, uh, proposed for NATO. The Americans forced through an ultimatum, giving the Bosnian Serbs just 12 hours to pull back. We don't just go and take out a tank that's been striking the town. We're going to be able to attack a wide target set. The point is to give the message 
that enough is enough. Only one man is willing to continue negotiations with the Serbs, the UN Special Envoy, Yasushi Akashi. There was no way that Akashi was going to be stopped from going back into discussions um, with President Milosevic and the Bosnian Serbs. He felt only he was going to be able to avert an action which would push the peacekeeping mission uh, over the edge. In the Adriatic, 200 NATO planes were armed and waiting. In Belgrade, the special envoy emerged with Milosevic and Karadic to announce another UN-brokered ceasefire. For two weeks, the Serbs had defied the UN and NATO. They had learned not to fear the international community. Mi smo tako srećni dočekali trupe Ujedinjenih nacija i na kraju smo konstatovali da je 10.000 Sarajlija civila poginulo ovde u prisutstvu trupa Ujedinjenih nacija. Kakva ironija. Another village in Bosnia was in ruins. This time, Muslims from Srebrenica had launched a raid against the Serbs. Nastupio je trenutak u kome se apsolutno nije moglo očekivati da sve to bude pod nekakvom razumnom kontrolom. The Serbs decided to seize Srebrenica. This decision would force the Americans to bring peace to Bosnia. But only after the people here had been sacrificed. Srebrenica was a refuge for tens of thousands of Muslims fleeing the Serbs. For three years they'd been surrounded. This people is attacked and wants freedom. Želi da se vrati na svoje ognjišta. Želi da živi normalnim životom kako i svi ostali narodi i narodnosti živi. Nasir Orić za klupom oficira upravo zbog pripreme naroda na takav egzodus, odnosno na operaciju koja se pripremala na Srebrnicu, bio je od strane gran štaba pozvan za instrukcije. The order was a trick. Once out, Srebrnica's commanders were forbidden to return. The enclave was no longer the top priority for the Bosnian government. Mnoga primirja, mnoge, mnogi politički ustopci naši državni organa bili uslovljeni da se spasi Srebrenica je. Srebrenica was doomed. The Bosnian government had realized that nobody in the West, not even their most ardent supporter, would lift a finger to save it. Already in June, the fate of Srebrenica seemed pretty gloomy. We already then were considering that some kind of swap for at least the smaller of the eastern enclaves for more territory in central Bosnia might be one of the things that would be wise. In early July, the Serbs attacked. Deprived of its commanders, Srebrenica could not resist the Serb advance. Naša zadnja poruka je bila da mi više nemamo vremena za javljanje novo. Da je Srebrenica pala i da narod ide u probu. 
To escape the Serb soldiers, thousands of Muslims in Srebrenica fled into the forest. They set out on a 40 mile walk through a forest ringed by Serb patrols. Zamislite 15.000 ljudi kad se postroji jedan i za drugu, jedan po jedan. Those Muslims who couldn't face the trek clung to the UN for protection. Twenty-five thousand Muslims now overwhelm the UN base in Srebrenica. But the handful of UN troops there were shoved aside by the Bosnian Serb army and its commander, General Mladic. The leader of the Serbs in Bosnia also put on a performance for the cameras. Our army is very, very responsible. People, uh, civilians, as well as UN personnel are completely safe and secure. The Serbs laid on coaches for the civilians. But when they reached Muslim territory, only women and children emerged. The men of Srebrenica had disappeared. Odvode i tamo tišina je malo, zatim se čuje lave špca, laju, zatim opet tišina, čuju se kasni meci, pobiju i vraćaju se na drugu stranu, uzimaju opet. There was no refuge. In this field alone, some 2,000 of Srebrenica's men are buried. The killing went on for days. U Ceranskim lukama smo naišli znači na leševi, nisu bili pokopani. Od 130, možda do 200 ljudi je bilo strijeljano tu. Bio je, ne znam, bili smo prvo pokušali da vidimo da li možemo nekog poznati, međutim bio je smrad veliki, ne znam, nije se mogo tu postupiti. The Muslims walking through the forest were easy prey for the Serbs. Sam život u Srebrenici je bio pakao, ali onaj put, ono što se desilo uz put, to je deveti krug pakao. Ajte, momci, živite, momci! Već nas bilo okoli tu, komplet. Počeli su granatirati. Počeli su zoljama tučile narod. I onda narod nije imao drugog izbora nego i krenuo tamo da se predaje. Ste mnogo uprosili. Kako se neš uprosti? Ajde, bolo, ne boj. Šta se bojiš, je bolo? Ajde, bolo, ajde. Ajde, slobodno. Ljudi bi počeli da vrište, da postanu agresivni. Ukoliko bi malo oružje, obavezno bi ga potrijebili. Tada se počela masovna samobijstva. Gledao sam tri druga. Tri dobra druga. Kako se zagljali, jedan od njih izvači bombu i ubija se trojica. Two years earlier, 
a French general had made a pledge to the people of Srebrenica. You are now under the protection of the UN forces. Now the new French president called on the UN to salvage its honor. J'ai proposé à nos principaux partenaires, à ceux qui sont les plus euh, attachés à ces règles du droit international, euh, du droit des gens à vivre, à être respectés, de réagir ensemble, de façon concertée, euh, de façon forte et limitée, en clair, de reprendre l'enclave de Srebrenica. No one believes that either the French or other UN forces in Bosnia uh, were either of a number or with the military equipment required, nor did they have a mandate to carry out what would be an act of war. Britain's stance cracked open the alliance that had led the UN in Bosnia. President Chirac looked for support elsewhere. The president heard President Chirac out with uh, great interest, demurred on the, as I recall, on the military uh, wisdom of it, or uh, feasibility of it, uh, and then suggested the alternative. Clinton told the French president he was prepared to use force, but only to create a stable balance of power in Bosnia. So the president's men mapped out a plan. It required transfers of population that earlier they might have condemned as ethnic cleansing. The isolated Muslim enclaves near the border with Serbia would go to the Serbs. But on the other side of the country, a large stretch of Serb lands would go to the Muslims. And that meant that rather than draw the lines in a kind of a higgledy-piggledy way, uh, that might make sense in terms of a detailed negotiation and where the current populations are, to do what we could to have a territory uh, that was as simplified as possible. The key to the Clinton plan was to bolster Bosnia's ally, Croatia. Croatia had lost a quarter of its territory to rebel Serbs. For four years, Croatia's president had been planning to seize it back. We did not think that uh, uh, that kind of an attack uh, uh, could do anything other than create a lot of refugees and, and cause a humanitarian problem. On the other hand, it always had the prospect of simplifying the matters. We, we knew a few days before the operation that it was going, that it was in fact going to occur. I went down to meet with President Tuchman to deliver a demarche. We are concerned by indication that you are preparing for an offensive in sectors south and north. We made clear to Tuchman uh, that we uh, did not favor uh, military action. Nakon ovakvog kosmičnog upozorenja koje se razumijesa da sam ja najozbiljnije uh, razmotrio, nisam odustao. Ja sam bio uvjeren da mi možemo postići pobjedu. Tuchman had read the signals well. Three days later, his army began shelling the rebel Serbs' capital, Knin. The Croats had a huge advantage in men and armor. They rolled in with ease. The Serb soldiers had already fled. Once again, a centuries-old community was uprooted. This time, more than a hundred thousand Serbs from Croatia. 
they had stuck by a regime based on ethnic cleansing. Now they paid the price. Čini se jednostavno da je velik broj ljudi odraslog srpskog počastva bio uključen u tu te srpske paravojne snage, a drugi dio počastva da je bio obmanut da evo da, da dolaze ustaše fašisti i da im nema drugo nego da, da bježe. To make sure the Serbs never returned, Tudjman's army set their villages alight. They murdered hundreds of old people who'd hung stubbornly on. Mislio sam da će 60-70% Srba ostati, da će shvatiti da je to demokratska Hrvatska koja im jamči građanska i etnička prava. Prema tome, sami su Srbi odgovorni za, tu, za takvu sudbinu kao što su je doživjeli. President Tudjman had achieved an ethnically pure Croatia. Zastava ovdje znači dovršenje dijela uspostave slobodne nezavisne Hrvatske. Bosnia's Muslims had joined their co-op ally in the attack. After four years of defeats, the president of Bosnia savored his first big victory. Bio je vreo da uspustno moj rođendan je tamo me dočekao, naravno, general Dudaković, jedan slavni general, ovdje veoma popularan. Došli ste u našu državu. Koliko je imaš bolje? Ima, ima sad najviše u sportu sa svih. Sad si najbolji, sad si najbolji. Ja sam rekao, nek' ti je sretna država Bosne i Hercevna, a kolika je, jesmo li Dragi vojnici, pozdrav domovini! Pozdrav! Bilo je jako mnogo naroda tamo, koji je bio oduševljen tek. U stvari, ošćalo se sube, se ošćalo dah slobode na tim krajevima. The celebration didn't last long. Thirty-seven were killed. The ballistics experts confirmed that the shell came from Bosnian Serb territory. It was just what the Americans were waiting for. Finally, the decks were cleared for a real military response, not some piece of garbage. A real bombing campaign, not a pinprick, not just a campaign, not just a, a bomb or two, not just a day or two, but as much as it took. I must say that I enjoyed it, I must say that. Because those who killed so many defenseless people, those who aimed baby hospitals, those who aimed children while playing, could finally feel what it means to be targeted, to be defenseless. And they deserved it.
The bombing had hurt the Bosnian Serbs in more ways than one. That morning, when they were at their most vulnerable, they'd been summoned to a secret meeting in the capital of Serbia. We knew that we would be bombed, even if we were able to be bombed. We would have been able to be bombed. The call came from their paymasters, the president of Serbia and the president of Montenegro. Oni su se stvarno bojali. Mislim da su tad bili svjesni veličine svih grešaka koje su napravili i svjesni činjenice da može da se upropasti sve, da jednostavno nestane Republike Srpske. The president of Serbia had unleashed Bosnia Serbs to fight his war. But for two years they had blocked any peace that would have secured his gains. He had to bring them to heel. I mi smo znali da oni ne mogu danas dugo prate, danas dugo slijede, ali ni mi nismo imali drugog izbora. Mi smo morali da se borimo do posljednjega. I sada je najbitnije da rat što pre stane, a ne da se preciziraju detalji svih mogućih rešenja. Jer o detaljima se može beskrajno razgovarati. Milosevic now demanded that the Bosnian Serbs sign an agreement granting him full power to negotiate a peace. Mi smo spremni da potpuno, potpuno zablokiramo sve moguće veze, sve ono što smo znali da eventualno ide kao neka vrsta, čak i humanitarne pomoći, da smo spremni da se potpuno odreknemo rukovodstva Republike Srpske. Bilo je potrebno da mi nastupamo kao Republika Srpska i da štitimo svoje interese. Njima je bilo veoma teško da potpišu takav jedan sporazum jer on u suštini znači političko samoubistvo. There was one man powerful enough to save Karatic. We asked the Patriarch to be here as a sign of a confidence and as a possible alibi for the government of the Republic of Serbia to accept our proposal. The difference is not that we are among people, but they are not able to say that they are not able to say that they are not able to say that they are not able to say that. The Bosnian Serb leaders surrendered. We consider President Milosevic's announcement yesterday that he can now negotiate for the Bosnian Serbs something of a procedural breakthrough. In fact, we knew that we had entered the realm of a serious negotiation for the first time. As American aircraft pounded the Bosnian Serbs, the American Assistant Secretary of State shuffled around. President Clinton has set us here today on a mission of peace in a moment of war. Holbrook's goal was to persuade the warring presidents to come to a peace conference. To the Serbs, he offered a form of recognition of their mini-state in Bosnia, Republika Srpska. There's one Bosnia. It's got two parts. Everyone agreed it would have two parts. Sarajevo's concession was to let one part be called Republika Srpska. In return, he promised the Bosnian Muslims that U.S. troops would enforce a peace deal. American shuttle diplomacy was backed by American bombing. NATO planes destroyed the Bosnian Serb communications network. They couldn't even make telephone calls. President Milosevic had to do something. He met Holbrook in Belgrade. Milosevic says to us, we've got to stop the bombing. He was challenging Holbrook's uh, uh, manhood by saying, you know, you're in charge of that country, uh, uh, Ambassador Holbrook. Can't you, you know, make the bombing stop? Uh, can't you do it? Holbrook said that first the shelling of Sarajevo must stop. The airport has to be open. Milosevic told him he should talk to the men responsible. President Milosevic and I were in conversation with the American side and we were told that if they want to be able to meet with Karadžić and Mladić. Holbrook looked over and said, well, where are they? He said, they're in a villa about uh, 200 meters away. <laughs> Milosevic decided to put Holbrook on the spot. 
the Americans had pointedly refused to meet Karadzic and Mladic, who'd been charged with war crimes. That's one of the few times uh, in this whole negotiating process where I thought Dick Holbrook was shook. So, uh, President Milosevic has, has made some suggestions and we're going to take a quick break to caucus among ourselves. And... The Americans decided to eat their words. They would meet the Bosnian Serbs. So, we said to Milosevic, uh, wait a minute, we want to set down some ground rules. Number one, no historical lectures. No bullshit. When the Bosnian Serbs arrived, the Americans told them they must withdraw their heavy weapons from the Sarajevo hills. We didn't want to take them in the whole of that ultimatum at that moment, because we lost Sarajevo and about 150,000 of our Serbs would have been exposed to the people, exposed to the strange attack of Muslim soldiers. To je jedna besmislica. Zamislite, nije završen rat, a da mi odmičemo naše teško oružje kojim branimo narod. Milotic is getting angrier and angrier, and finally he erupts in another one of his statements about the Serb people, the Serb nation. Samo im je srpski narod toliko veći trn u oku koliko ovo duže traje, jer je za ovo zadnje katastrofa da su sila number one, i da trebaju da pregaze svet kao da uzmu četku pa ga prefarbaju u boju koja njima odgovara, a nisu još to raščistili sa nekim malim srpskim narodom. Now Holbrook put Milošević to the test. I said, Mr. President, you told us we were here to be serious. If we're not serious, we have to go. They walked out. Hey, why don't we go outside? Yeah. Milošević reminded Mladić that if they stayed out, NATO yeah, would destroy his army. Ja se bojim da je general Ratko Mladić, koga inače cijenim kao oficira i kao čovjeka, nažalost, nakon tri i po godine rata, potpuno izgubio kontakt sa realnošću. I kada smo dobili garancije da i muslimani moraju da povuku teško oružje, i kada smo dobili garancije da muslimani ne smiju da nas napadnu, i tada smo postigli neku saglasnost. The Serbs withdrew the heavy weapons that had crippled Bosnia's capital. The Americans called off their airstrikes. All the Americans needed to start their peace conference was a ceasefire in the rest of Bosnia. The Muslims and their Croat ally scrambled to grab territory while they still could. Zapravo, Srbi su još uvijek imali više od 49% u svojim rukama. Jasno je da, kako gospodin Izebeković, tako i ja, da smo smatrali da taj poraz koji su Srbi doživjeli treba iskoristiti. U vrstu Bosnije, Kroat artilleri i muslim infantry slice through Srb lines. The conquering armies drove a new wave of Serb refugees into Serbia and Montenegro. animirali sa činjenicom da bi taj veliki egzodus naroda radikalizovao političku atmosferu i to više ne bi zavisilo od odluke bilo kojeg rukovodstva, nego bi objektivno događaj i tekli prema tome da se mora ući u rat. Holbrook took the warning seriously, but now that the Muslims had the bit between their teeth, it would be difficult to persuade them to stay. To put his case, he chose a public display of American friendship for Bosnia, the swearing-in of a new ambassador. And I will faithfully and well discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. After the swearing-in, I asked if General Don Carrick and I could see President Izabegovic alone. We were at that time in the negotiations that if we did not get a ceasefire, 
that we might not have this moment uh, again for some time. To persuade Bosnia's president to stop his army, the intelligence officer painted a grim picture. We were concerned that the Serbs were now reinforcing their area from Sarajevo and others where weapons had been withdrawn. I said, Mr. President, they're going to be able to punch holes in your lines because they're too thin. I said, well, you are shooting craps with the destiny of your country. The Bosnian president returned to his office to consult his generals. Was it possible the Americans were deceiving him? Ja sam rekao da mi imamo snage da idemo dalje i da ne treba prihvatiti primjerje jer mi smo u tom trenutku imali i snage i sredstva za realizaciju tih zadataka koji smo već sebi unaprijed postavili. But president Izet Begović had another worry, his Croat ally. A week earlier, the Americans had told President Tudjman to ease off. Tudjman was very pleased to comply because he didn't want to over-strengthen the Muslims anyway. Molim, to više nisu bila izravno hrvatska područja. Mi bismo u svakom slučaju imali daljnih kubitaka. Mi smo znali šta to znači u slučaju da nastavimo rat, mi bi ga morali voditi sami. Dakle, bez Hrvata i sa osudom svijeta. Takav rat nije imao nikakvi šansi za Bosanca. But Izzet Begovic told the Americans he would need to sell the ceasefire to his people. He said, okay, we want the water, the electricity and the gas turned on. Istina, htjeli smo da dobijemo na vremenu još. Ja sam prihvatio preki dva, tri uroka od pet dana pod uvjetom da se otvori Sarajevo. See you. Uuuu, rodilo nam brate. Evo ga dobro pravo. The longest siege in modern history was over. I'm pleased to announce that the parties in Bosnia have agreed to a ceasefire to terminate all hostile military activities. The president's men rushed to turn the ceasefire into a peace treaty. They would apply all America's diplomatic muscle. They chose an unlikely venue. Welcome to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, one of the largest and most diverse United States Air Force installations. With his re-election looming, President Clinton gambled that cooped up in the base, the three Balkan presidents would hammer out a deal. He gave his men 17 days to twist their arms. Are you optimistic about the talks? I am. If I am not, I wouldn't be here. Thank you. Thank you. The Americans' hope for peace depended on the man they once called a war criminal. How confident are you the talks will succeed, sir? Come over here. How confident are you the talks will succeed? Well, I'm optimist. I believe the talks will succeed. We attach the great importance to peace initiative of the United States. On behalf of President Clinton, I welcome you to the start of these historic peace talks. If we fail, the war will resume and future generations will surely hold us accountable. And then I walked around to the other side of the table where they had been carefully placed and I sort of pushed them together and urged them to shake hands, which they, which they did. Izzet Begovic knew these talks would ratify the division of his country. He'd already agreed to share half of Bosnia with his dangerous allies, the Croats. The rest would go to the Serbs. From the start, Izek Begovic told his Prime Minister to conduct the talks. We cannot survive the dead. We cannot survive the 17,000 children dead in Bosnia. But we can get some justice here, and that justice means a fully functional Bosnian state. Integrity, sovereignty, 
justice, democracy. Thank you. Okay. The constitution of a new Bosnian state was to be drafted here. Powers were stripped from the central government and given to the Muslim Croat Federation and the Serb Republic. No one wanted these ceasefire lines as permanent boundaries, but attempt after attempt to change them led to deadlock. I had always had in my mind a 17-day conference, and here we were on day 16, and we were nowhere further than we'd been on day 11. It was a very cold and biting day, but I said to Milosevic, let's walk. And Chris Hill and Milosevic and I took off for come by security guards and we walked out to the edge of the base and around the fence. And we ended up at the, uh, at the officers' club at about quarter of twelve. Holbrook's assistant then invited the Bosnian prime minister to the officers' club. Maybe we could get them together and they could at least talk like, you know, human beings. I went over to say hello to Silajic and I told him that Milosevic wanted to talk about Garajda. And he wanted to come to my table. He said no. The fact that he comes to my table gives him, in a way, a psychological advantage. But he is doing something, that he is making a concession, and so on. So I said, no, I'll go to his table. <laughs> These are the bulk, small Balkan ways. They began to speak in Serbo-Croatian. And uh, Milosevic was saying to Harris, Harris, you know, what do you want? What he asked for was security for Garajda the one remaining Muslim enclave in eastern Bosnia. We wouldn't leave it as an enclave there. We had to connect it territorially with the rest of Bosnia. Kriza u Bosni i Hercegovini može se rešiti samo političkim putem. Ne može se rešiti vojnim sredstvima. And he said enough is enough. I'll connect it. I will do that. You can get a road under the international control from Gorazde to the territory. It was agreed that NATO would build the Garajde Sarajevo road. So now Milosevic had to negotiate with the Americans just how much Serb land he'd give up for it. So that night I brought President Milosevic into our little map room where we had these high-tech video games used to make more precise bombing. Uh, we had the entire aerial photograph of the entire country, and you could fly with a joystick over any part of the country, stop, look straight down, look sideways, go up, go down. Prvo mi je stalno na pameti kad je Holbrook pogledao na ekranu Bosnu. Vidim li ja to ovdje? Nema ništa. Ovdje su samo planine, nema kuće, nema sela. Mi kažemo, tačno nema, ali takva je Bosna i ovo je on suhvatio za glavu. They had to find a corridor through the mountains that was wide enough to be made defensible for the new road to Garajde. And we began to, quote, fly President Milosevic up and down a road that ran through the mountains from Garajde to Sarajevo, which, would, which, if upgraded, might do the trick. We did this till about two in the morning while a great amount of alcohol was consumed. So finally, Milosevic stuck out his hand to me and said, okay, this is it. And he drank a toast. Richard Charles Albert Holbrook, we have found our road. Level 27 to lane 14. The Americans were determined to wrap it up by their Thanksgiving holiday, now only a week away. But the Muslims were in no mood to make any compromise. I misli su da se to da prevazići ovaj nekakvim sastancima, kao da se kao da se radilo o nekim ličnim sukobima. Međutim, izna između nas su stajale praktički the Bosnians had to be persuaded to play ball. One method of persuasion we wanted to use on uh, the Bosnians was two big charts, sometimes they're called storyboards, which described the number of things that they were achieving. What they had achieved was more territory. The Muslim Croat Federation had been promised 51% of Bosnia to the Serbs 49. 
Christopher's chart showed that the Garajda corridor took them well over their 51%. We showed that to Izabekovic as part of the reason to urge him to conclude this deal. Don't, don't let this deal get away. On the top of one of the panels, big letters, the Federation gains 58% of the territory. And when he left, that panel was left in President Izabekovic's room between the couch and the, and the, and the, and the night case, the, the lamp place and so on. So the only thing that you could actually see, if you sit in the room, was well, the Federation has 58%. And then Milosevic came <laughs> to visit President Izabegovic, and what he saw was that. <laughs> Milosevic didn't see the humor of it. He strode over to the U.S. delegation. He erupted. He said, I didn't know that I didn't know that I'd given up this much territory. I said, I'm very sorry. He said, you know, only 5149 can work, and that is our commitment. Holbrook had no choice. He gave the two sides until midnight the next day to agree to a 5149 map. But the Muslims refused to give up a single parcel of land until they'd been satisfied on their key demand. From the start of the talks, their delegation had insisted the Serbs surrender all the districts of Sarajevo they controlled. And the Serbian delegation was very unhappy about that because they hoped to divide Sarajevo, what they call Serbian Sarajevo, and the rest of Sarajevo. The top Bosnian Serbs charged with war crimes were barred from the talks, but one representative was allowed to put their case. Serbs su samo zahtijevali lokalnu svoju vlast, znači u opštinama u kojima su oni većina, i tražili su svoju policiju. The plan that could not work, obviously, we wouldn't agree to that. Krajišnik had gone up to the maps and slamming them with his fist, had said, I live here. He's pointing to a farm he has in Elidja. And I'm never going to give this up. And six hours later, they had practically restarted the war. Milosevic told Holbrook he would settle this himself. He made a startling offer to the Muslims' negotiator. He said, you deserve Sarajevo because you fought for it. And those cowards killed you from the hills, meaning the Bosnian Serbs. Milosevic gave it to him. I was amazed. It soon became clear the Serb president required something in return. The town of Birchko was the spot where the Serb Republic could be severed in two. It would give the Muslims a way to stop fresh Serb aggression. President Izet Begovic told the Prime Minister that on this he had to be tough. I said to Silajic that there was a lot of people who expected that there would be a lot of peace. I think that it would be a lot harder to hear the news about that the price of the price of the Birchko. The Prime Minister returned to put Izet Begovic's counter-demand for Birchko. President Milosevic would not agree. He said, we must solve that thing now. I must have 15 to 20 kilometer corridor. Milosevic won this one. And Selajdic still had to find a way to reduce the Muslim Croat share to 51%. In the small hours of the morning, he had an idea. He offered to return a huge chunk of territory that Muslim Croat forces had taken from the Serbs just before the conference. And they shook hands and they said, OK, we've got an agreement. So we actually brought in a bottle of wine that the secretary had brought with him, and he said, let's celebrate. Where every previous attempt had failed, the Americans had succeeded. They'd ended the war in Bosnia. But in their excitement, they forgot the Croat delegation. Državni tajnik Christopher je predložio da će on doći između oko jedan sat nakon konačnih razgovora sa Miloševićem. On nije došao do jedan, mi smo ga čekali do negdje dva sata, oko dva i trideset smo išli spavati. I just felt that something was very wrong here. And I leaned over to Chris Hill and said, I better get uh, Tujman in here. And I said, uh, Dick, it's 4.15. Four, it's four uh, uh, how about uh, I'll get Mati Granic? 
kazao je da bi državni tajnik želio sa mnom razgovarati hitno. Granić arrived sometime at 4.15 or 4.20 in the morning, dressed impeccably. I could see him sort of looking uh, to the side because he could see uh, something that looked like a map. I oni su menudili šampanjcem. Ja sam tražio vode prije nego što vidim prijedloge njihove konačne mapa. And we produce the map. And Mate Granić, mild-mannered physician, turns into a rhinoceros. Because <clears throat> the map actually cut into what mainly Croat forces took from Serbs in Western Bosnia. I oni su mi predložili potpuno neprihvatljiv prijedlog. He jumps up, hits the map with his hand, says impossible, impossible, 0.00% chance my president will accept this. Ja sam to energično odbio i rekao da to nema 0.0 chance za prihvatiti da je to absolutely unacceptable za nas. And he turns on Saladić and he just rips him. He says, you have given away the territory we conquered. Remember, it was almost 20 days of negotiating. We were all very much exhausted, very little sleep. In 37 minutes, the peace agreement had collapsed. It was left to President Clinton to try to rescue the conference. He phoned the Croat president and asked him to surrender some of the territory they'd refused to give up the night before. Ja sam predsjedniku Clintonu rekao, dear president, I already did that. Ja, jer sam ja već odlučio da znači da zbog, molim, ovi nekoliko kilometara brdovitog kamena, ne dovedemo u pitanje mir. But... He said, I will do it only if the Bosnians also give up part of the land they claim. I, I, I did, I, I did uh, lose my calm a little bit with him. Uh, and uh, some, some have said I shouted at him, that may be a little overstatement, but I'm quiet enough so when I raise my voice it's noticeable. Odgovor je glasio, procente smo uskladili, a kad je riječ o Brčkom, Brčko ne možemo da. He asked that Brčko, given to the Serbs the night before, be decided by arbitration. I told him, you know, that this was the end of the line and I was not going to try to negotiate something else for him. The United States has already told the Balkan delegations the talks will end in a few hours without a Bosnia peace agreement. Milosevic and Tudjman now got together. From the beginning of the crisis in Yugoslavia, they had determined the fate of Bosnia. Milosevic suggested the two of them sign without Izet Begovic. Ja sam ukazao da na to ne mogu pristat. I predsjednik Tudjman je predložio predsjedniku Miloševiću da prihvati prijedlog predsjednika Izetbegovića o arbitraži. Milošević je rekao možda nije mi na moj, na taj moj prijedlog. Holbrook and his team were starting an exhausted post-mortem on the conference when Milošević burst in. Milošević says, ok, my last offer, the most I can ever do for you, I would agree to put the city of Birchko under international arbitration to be decided in a year. Sigurno da se sve koncesije koje su učinjene ne mogu uporediti sa ostvarenjem rezultata, to je mir. This time before celebrating they checked with all the parties. Ja sam prihvatio naravno Kristofera i samo me upitao ostajete li dalje pri arbitraži za Birchko. We've got to decide right now. And there was a very, very long pause. Ja sam rekao, ostajem. On je samo rekao, onda je sve u redu. And I said to Warren Christopher, let's get out of here. Dick Holbrook looked like he was in front of a gas chamber and they just pulled him back. I hope he watches this.
<laughs> I wonder if we could ask the three presidents to stand up and for us to join them standing and express our appreciation for what they've done in Dayton and our hopes for the future. Today, six months later, the Dayton peace is still holding. Just.